come down with me. They do have everything with me. Uh, that's the point. So, I deleted as many things as I thought I'd need to, so I could tell the story. And it's full encompass. I would hope I can get at least, I don't know, two or three hours, just because I feel like that's how long it's going to take. Is it going to take me that long? I don't flipping know, but if it does, it does. So, it started in 1998. I don't remember shit from there. So, it started in early 2000s. 2003. Or like 2001, at least that's what my passport tells me. Let me recheck that bitch. I actually brought it with me because I'm going to tell a little bit of a joke when I go pick up the shit that I want to go pick up because, well, I've already been there. So that's going to make it one time funny. And two, because I brought both my passport and my ID because for what I'm getting, I do need ID. And I knew I needed ID, but I'm like, yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I didn't do it. So, what's she passport, Shay? Well, it says I was born in 98. And August of 2000 to August of 2005. So it must have been issued in 2000. Hmm. That doesn't say when I was here. When was this? Ugh, stupid look. Whatever. Uh, okay, stamp is 2002. So I'm assuming. Oh, hello, Doe. Bye, Doe. Yeah, definitely Doe. So I'm assuming in 2002. What's the date? Because it was stamped that day, so I'm assuming that has to be the truth. Because it's hard to get the truth from people that, well, not necessarily people, but someone that doesn't like to tell the truth. November 15th, 2002 was the day I came to America. Now, you can say a lot about any place because there's always going to be the good, there's always going to be the bad. But my personal opinion doesn't matter at this point. I'm just going to tell my story. So, I came here. And apparently the first ever English words I said was mama poo. Makes sense. I had to shit. It's pretty simple. And apparently from the regalings of my story told by someone I've come to learn later in life doesn't always tell the truth and doesn't always recite things as they are said to her as I've come to learn in my personal arguments and debates and disputes with her to be like, so... Why is she allowed to tell a story of my origin if she's not going to tell it correctly? I don't, you know, even if she told me the correct story, like, I assume she did, but, like, I don't know. So I'm going to try to do it to the best versions that I can remember because, honestly, when I was listening, I wasn't. I have issues in a lot of things, but for the fact that I act so issueless, and I say act because, yes, I've been acting for years. Because, well, who wants to love the orphan that his own parents didn't want to love that need? Oh, uh, also, also. Am I disabled? Am I disabled? Because I'm assuming with every new crowd, there's going to be, well, not every new crowd, but with every new video, there's going to be a new crowd. So essentially, some people are going to return, some people aren't. But for the fact of the matter is, disabilities look so different in mind and body and spectrums. It's just like, well, I've come to learn in life through my experiences. Don't judge a book by its cover. But a pimp typically dresses like a pimp. A boss typically dresses like a boss. A CEO typically dresses like a CEO. Like, you just have to know what you're looking for to figure out what you're looking for. Like, if you are into the thing that you're into, then you're going to know what the foot they look like. But at the same time, (laughs) when it comes to certain disabilities, to judge a book by its cover is to be fooled easily. But take the chance and take the time and you will learn that, wow, hmm, everything has range. Regardless of what you may know, you may not know fully. And it's just like, don't be a bully just because you assume you know all, do you? I don't. I just want to learn more things. And I did more or less the DUI, DIY do-it-yourself on mental health like some people would do in carpentry and other things. And it's because everybody would be like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And that's early 2000s to hell, even today yesterday just blah this blah that and it's financing and actually seeming like something's different that makes people want to question you but aside from those little small times where people will question what's wrong with you but the doctors never say you know what let's ask you some questions and it was never bad enough for the teachers to be like you know what 
let's let's put you down some special like I was in special ed classes throughout all of high school, elementary and middle school. And it's more or less because <laughs> sitting down and paying attention was an issue for me. And then sometimes a learning delay from what the information it's saying because I would read certain things and either I didn't quite get it because the question seemed like it was asked incorrectly in my personal opinion, or I just generally didn't get it. I write it and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck they're asking. And there are many ways to approach that and depending on the environment and the community that you're in, sometimes things are caught and they're uh, able to be fostered so it's not an issue and sometimes things just fall through the cracks and I feel as if a lot of people fall through the cracks where some people are just blessed to have a good community rather it's uh, their parents rather it's the school community rather if it's just that one teacher that took a special interest I don't mean like a pedophile and trying to rape them or groom them but like a special interest like wow you're a you're a you're a one of your kind like nobody else like your mind like we could compare you to others but like it still wouldn't be the same because they are them and you are you and i feel like as in uh yeah not that i feel as i was growing up certain people were able to at least distinguish me from others with the way that my mind developed things the way that i articulated things but first it was for me to figure out how to do these things so like i said early 2000s i came here 2002, if I remember correctly, September, or is it November? Ugh. See, memory funny. And I just told you guys eventually at some point, I don't remember. So I came here, and like a lot of my childhood, I don't remember, which is probably a good thing because there's probably not many good things in it. But I do remember I used to have panic attacks, and I know what it is now, but when I was younger, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean find a seat they won't let me sit there they won't let me sit there my own brother was a fucking asshole he won't let me sit with him so like i was literally forced to sit down with people that just like like fine and like i don't necessarily know why aside from like teenagers being teenagers me being melanated and i'm just like this motherfucker's honduran but he's been in this country a lot longer than me so it's of course, he had his own friends, his own type of clit and all this and all that. And for me to go to school, for me to sit on the bus, for me to interact with other kids was by far the biggest battle of my whole entire life. Being young, like I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And honestly, I didn't even know this until I got my transcript because I needed to get my green card, which I ended up working for. But that's later on in the story. It worked for a lot of things that you guys wouldn't get. That's the point. Later on in the story. So. I, well, yeah, 43 days, if I remember correctly, I missed in elementary. 43 days, if not 48. And I was proud of that. Well, I could say fucking hate it, but someone's like, that's not something you should be proud of, Ethan. It's just like, you guys don't know how the fuck I take things. You assume, oh, you look fine. Oh, you act fine. And did you ever answer the question if I'm disabled yet? Yeah, because I ain't showed you the proof of what disabilities could look like. Because that's going to be later on the story. So, it's just like... For me to miss those days were fucking perfect for me because it wasn't a sensory overload. But you know what the stupid part is? I would literally feel sick being at home. But as soon as I went to school, I felt less, stu less stuffy. I felt as if my mind was a little bit clearer. But at the same time, I fucking absolutely hated school. I fucking hated it. But I don't know something about the school atmosphere. Maybe you, it was just it was better for my lungs or better for my soul but at the same time i was in panic mode a lot a lot a lot and for like a small stint i did get bullied by this one kid that like later on in time we didn't like fall out and like i would say i didn't have many bullies but at the same time I, like if the kid wasn't physically pushing me and hitting me i wouldn't consider them a bully that one actually did a little bit so that's why I consider him my only bully, but I've had verbal arguments or debates and it's just like, if I don't really get the insult, then are you really insulting me? If somebody has to tell me that you're insulting me, then are you insulting me? Probably. I don't fucking know. You tell me. Is this supposed to be offended? Am I supposed to be offended? Is this offensive? Okay, I think now I'm offended because somebody was offended on my behalf and told me I should be offended. As long as you don't fucking swing at me, I don't give a shit. As long as you ain't physically harming me, I don't give a shit. And... I say that, and as I've been developing more, I've actually been able to mean that because I used to say that not realizing, say what you mean and mean what you say because, well, I was taught by, I don't know how to say it, because I've had, I had 11 disabled siblings, 
aside from David, he was the only one I actually wasn't. Like, his worst disability is dyslexia, and that's basically like fucking a paper cut to everybody else having fucking... There's a double amputee, there's a couple autisms, there's a shaken baby, there's fucking uh, cerebral palsy on top of a bone or cocaine addiction because of the mom. Like, he's got a paper cut. And honestly, technically speaking, so do I, because it's all I have is heart issues. But still, I am a diet, apparently. And apparently, the procedure that they were going to do and try to do was something that... Oh, yeah, that's the fucking thing. <laughs> the procedure that they were going to do was like... Uh, Oh, you've never done it before. And your country can't do it. That's why you're here, dummy. And you're going to get it done here. And because you ain't got nobody else to go back to, we might as well keep your ass here. Also, to finish off the beginning part of the story, because I, like, I just told you I came here in 2002, but why? I told you that part. Uh, and I told you essentially because I was an orphan. And I am an orphan. And like, when it comes to talk about siblings, to me, I'm just like, I, I was taught that the aunt that was my aunt wasn't really my aunt, just really good friends of hers. And I'm just like, so that's not your sister? And she'd be talking about kids that are her kids, but aren't her kids just really good friends of her? I'm just like, so that's not so what the fuck is it? What the fuck is real? What the fuck is honest? So at this point, I'm just like, I am an orphan. So honestly, all these kids that are around me, yes, they are my siblings. But biologically, you look at the fucking family tree and you tell me how the fuck that both white parents got a black child, a white child, a child from Louisiana, a child from Texas, a child from Haiti, a couple of them, a child from Honduras. So like, you're telling me how two Caucasians produce that much color and they're, I don't really know their lineage if they have any fucking uh slaves that they end up impregnated far enough back because of where they came from all this all that i didn't choose to learn a lot of things i was already dealing with a lot of things but you look fine you look normal you articulate so well there could be nothing wrong with you so middle school um at some point in like my elementary and middle school time because i don't really remember a lot of my childhood i wanted a sibling that was more like me Dang, oh well. This motherfucker's like super serum type of motherfucker. I was like, I said, like me. He liked me twi times two, and he ain't got as many issues as me. Like I said, the band aid dude. So I'm just like, it wasn't middle school time. He actually came. Well, yeah, he did, he did, he did, he did. He came middle school, kind of like high school ish time. Or maybe, uh, yeah, because I wanted somebody like me. And what I meant by that is, and a house full of many disabled siblings, and it's, I say 11, but honestly, it depends on the year, it depends on time. I was seeing and making decisions and shit like, <laughs> nine-year-olds not supposed to see this, eight-year-old, seven-year-old, six-year-old, five-year-old, 13, like, I was ahead of my fucking time, which is why I kind of get why people would call me an old soul, because... Bitch, I've been doing healthcare before I even knew what the fuck healthcare was. I didn't know how to define half the things that I was seeing until I got older and was able to articulate. I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. That's what I'm doing. Shit that kids aren't supposed to be doing. This is what the fuck adults do. Adults get paid $20 an hour, $19 an hour, $18 an hour. And to be honest, do I have fucking memory of doing half of it? No. I should know how to put it in the Mickey tube. I don't. I'm pretty well uh, around about around hydrocephalic children just because I'm used to seeing it. But the first time I ever saw a hydrocephalic child, oh my god, why the fuck is this head so huge? What the fuck is wrong with him? The worst part is his head was so fucking huge. His eyes were fucking slit back like this. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like back then, I wouldn't have been able to be witty enough to make an age joke. Now I'm going to, but not going to. But back to the point, because I already did. I'm just like, what the fuck? And then, no, to add... In worse, not only did he have a high spud head, from my understanding, he had a weird tumor, I think it was. I don't even know if it was a tumor. I think that's what we were calling it back then. On his back, and I'm just like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck? Is this just a huge head? The thing on the back? What the fuck? And he's a baby. That's not his fucking choice. He was like seven months, eight months, six months. I don't know, he was a fucking baby, and he was by far the scariest baby, and without sounding rude, but it's going to sound rude, the ugliest baby I've ever seen, so it doesn't matter if you show me your child, I'm going to automatically think it's cute, and I've seen so much shit, it's unfucking believable because, no, nah, there's no way in hell you could have seen it, what type of life did you live, well, I lived in more or less of a foster home, got adopted into it, it wasn't really a foster home, but they still had foster parent licensing, so therefore they could get kids to see, and uh, foster for medical issues like we did 
I don't know. I say we as a... I, I, I actually, I did participate. I can't say we. I think I fucking paid for it. Eh, the car I get to use and all this and all that. Like, it all pays off later in time, but not really. Like, in the patience and the being able to love other people of other backgrounds and being able to uh, be around people just for the hell of it. It's just like, it pays off later on, but does it really? I don't fucking know. So, we did, like... I don't know, there's fucking Jesse, there was Flamanda, there was Stefan, technically speaking, Richard, I don't even know where the fuck he went anymore. And then there was also, what was his name? Another hydrophobic child, Logan, but he his head was a little bit smaller, and the kid had personality, like, Jesse and Logan were like night and day, just because they were not the same. And like, by the time Logan came around, I got used to seeing how I just feel like heads. I've already saw Flamanda. Flamanda was literally, yet again, night and day from Jesse. Like, I'd say Flamanda and uh, Logan had about the same type of personality. But uh, Flamanda, the issue with that is, yet again, fostering her until she uh, got her shunt in, and she did. I'm pretty sure I even went in for that surgery. Like, there, to be honest, a lot of the days I missed in elementary was because of the kids. On top of my panic attacks, but like, how am I gonna tell people like, yeah, I was a, I was a caretaker from like, three until like, mm, not three, like probably about five, two thousand two, I would have been four, because I'm two years older than my actual age, and it was in November. That's the, that's the easiest way for me to remember it. Back to the point. So like, I was a caretaker from the age of four until when did shit start slowing down? I would say more or less when we moved to. The area that we're currently in, and that was in two th- the <coughs> excuse I uh, 2013, I think it was roughly 2012, 13 December, like fallish of 12 into early 13, maybe mid 13. I don't know. And I would say, yeah, basically all my life, not like I was a foster. I was hell uh, not. I was help caretaking. And, like, how do you go to school and explain that when you ain't got the fucking words to? Like, the only thing I could say, like, if I was to ever put words, I would have been like, yeah, I helped my baby brother with the balloon head. Did this motherfucker say balloon head? Ethan, that, that, because if you've never seen it, then it's, it's preposterous. It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. If I don't see it, if I don't know about it, it doesn't exist. Apparently... That's how some people think. I don't. There's a lot of things I do believe that don't exist, uh, that do exist without me ever seeing it or knowing about it because I'm just like, <laughs> that line though, <laughs> fact is stranger than fiction. <laughs> It'd be like that though. So I was just, I didn't know how to ever explain or talk about it. And for the fact that eh, I wasn't like the most popular kid at all in school, like I would say my high school years were definitely better than any of my other years. I'm like, The whole entire shift between 13 and 12, not 13, I meant 2013, 12, not like 13 and 12, the age range, but I would say that I became the most aware at 12. Like I was even a little bit more aware in my younger years. I will say I do remember that. See, I'm all over the fucking place with my stories. If you've listened for this long, if you've seen any of my other shit, you'd be like, yeah, there's probably something else wrong with them mentally or right with them. Who cares? It's not going to be much longer. Back to the point. So. When I first actually remember coming this year, like, I don't even remember what year, so had to be between 2002 because, like I said, the name passport, the stamp, anytime before 2002. So from 1998 to 2001 and, like, well, I guess 2002 and November 14th, I was in Haiti or November 13th, I was in Haiti. So from that time span, I don't know what the fuck was going on with me. I don't know if people are holding, like, uh, a little bit. I do remember that I was in an orphanage, white kids or kids that were white and blue outfits to go to school. I was one of the kids I was too young to go to school back then. So I just stayed at home and I guess somebody like I remembered a little bit of things like I guess somebody was cooking something on the frying pan. I just ate the scraps afterwards. Another thing, somebody behind a boom box, not boom box, somebody that would sit in a rocket chair next to a boom box I'd hang out with. And there'd be another guy. Yeah, a lot of people. Another guy behind a fence. He'd give me shit. So, like, I don't even know if those are real memories or false memories, but those are the memories I remember the most. And then one more. I pissed on somebody. I don't fucking know if it was nurse. I don't know if it was my mom. I don't know who the fuck the chick was. But I know it was a female. And like I said, the dude with the boombox and then the dude with the fence. Also know there's fucking dudes. I don't know why. But, like, I remember those memories. I don't even know who the fuck the kids were anymore. Like, 
I only remember the uniforms because I remembered white. But the fucked up part is I don't remember if the skin was white. I just remembered it was like white uniform shirt. It was like a dressy shirt, collar and everything. Not like the fucking polos, but like something you'd buy at men's warehouse or some shit like that. And then they had, uh, it was either blue or black. I'd say more or less pants, not skirt. So I don't remember it being skirt. And I just remember that about it. And I just remembered eating the food. It's just so, so young, but nothing very vital to anything that tells me about my parents, where I was. I don't know. And like, I think I used to know the orphanage place. And if I actually was at home, I could have scrounged up some paperwork. I'm like, ah, yeah, here's some vital information that can help corroborate my story to make me seem less crazy. But shit, when facts are in fiction, you ain't going to believe half the shit that I say anyways. So like I keep saying, I was a caretaker basically <laughs> from 2002 till I say probably 2012. And about 2013, when we moved to a different place, things seemed to have slowed down a lot more. I don't know if they lost their care license, like their foster care license, but I'm assuming they did or they just stopped or I don't know. I just know that the reasoning for us to move here was more or less because the lady loved moving around for one. And then two, there were supposed to be better uh, opportunities, better things for us to do and all this and all that. Like, I, I don't like change. I don't know if I've ever said that in any of my videos, but I am not a fan of change. And my whole entire life was a bunch of changes, all this and all that. And sometimes this person's here, sometimes this person's gone. Like, I'm pretty darn goofy in the head, is the nicest way to say it. And I remember another thing that happened in my childhood as I'm speaking about it. Uh, I don't remember what grade I was in. <laughs> but for the fact, the middle school and the elementary had shared... Uh, shared domain more or less and the only separation was a lunchroom i do remember i was sitting sitting standing whatever in the lunchroom slash gymnasium because it was one of those small areas and i remembered essentially i was supposed to be waiting for my ride now between pickup and the bus like i somehow was able to make it onto the bus because pickup is supposed to be if i remember correctly I don't know, like five minutes before and then sometimes five minutes after. And the fact of the matter is I literally saw basically every single kid's parent come and pick them up. And I was the last one. I'm like, the buses are still here, though. Like, it's a long walk. I don't even know how to get home. I've been abandoned before. <laughs> so I ran into the bus because, well, what was my safe bet? Waiting until hopefully they get there. And then, do you know the talking to I got? I'm like, I was abandoned. You should know this already. Why are you upset at me? Because I got out of the bus. Your ass was fucking late. That was clearly the lady's story. Like, the old man and I, I wouldn't say we've had many yelling bouts because he's not the type to really yell. Oh, well, I wouldn't say at the kids, but it was more or less if the yelling matches was between him and the lady, him and Daniel. And him and some of the kids, but like me, oh yeah. You think this is a game? You think this is a game? You think this is funny? You think this is funny? <laughs> of course I do. I don't fucking know what to think about shit. That's your guys' job to teach me. Didn't do too well. Yeah, yes and no. Like, fucked up parts when I graduated. They're like, oh, I didn't think you would do it the first time through. And I was like, <laughs> I would have dropped off. I'd come back for round two. Fuck that shit. But I did do. I did do. And just hearing that line, it's like, wow, the confidence. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Because at the same time, I could have done anything and nothing I wanted to. We literally had a fucking sibling that ended up giving up on life in 2011. This motherfucker was in his junior year, could have graduated, and apparently he was on AB honor roll. I don't know if he was in special ed classes. I'm pretty sure cognitively he was fine. He was just abnormal physically. But at the same time, he chose to want to give up, and nobody just... Nobody poured fucking Mountain Dew or some shit on his laptop. Nobody forced him. Like, they said and applied pressure for a little bit. But, like, empty threats, empty threats. Some people learn empty threats is, well, they're going to say things. They might try a little bit. But if I keep being stubborn, they just might give up. And they did. They gave up. Like, he has stopped doing shit since 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 2023. He was supposed to be the first foreigner to graduate. Because Daniel was the first one, to, well, not necessarily the first one to graduate, but like first one that I can remember. And he's American. So I was just thinking, okay, 
okay, so Juan's going to graduate, and I'm going to graduate, and everybody else is going to graduate, and all this and all that, because I believed in the whole entire shit that I was being sold, that everybody's got to do this and this and this and this and this and this, and that's how you be happy and live a successful life, <laughs> when that's not really how it's individually developed and individually planned, because your dream life isn't my dream life, my dream life isn't your dream life, and some people might have things that are similar, but they're not always going to be exactly the same. But for some people, it's like, yeah, no, 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 that's not dream life. No, no, what you think and what you want. No, no, you're delusional. You're crazy. You're, you're, you're somebody I can't share my thoughts and opinions. It's what I think. But everybody's different. It's just like, at the end of the day, you know you're going to die. And if you don't, well, you're going to die eventually. So you might as well have fun. Don't rape, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. And don't listen to me because who am I to tell you what the fuck to do? You gotta live with your demons at the end of the day, not me. Well, I got mine, you got yours, but are you fighting your mind or is it just things that you don't want to fucking be accountable for? Middle school years, back to that. Um, brother, like me, superhuman, unlike me. Kind of superhuman because for what I have, it's just like, you sure heart patient? You sure you're a heart patient? Uh, Cause you don't outran most of us. Not everybody, but I would consider myself like compared to athletes, I could play with them, but I'd get destroyed. But put me with normal kids, pff, consider me an athlete. <laughs> Him on another story, shit. <laughs> He's like one of those motherfuckers that could do any sport and then did. I was like, how the fuck did I get cool, like cool enough to have two of these motherfuckers at my school? And like him and I clearly had cordials and. Issue, not cordial is probably a bad word for it. We clearly had issues and fights and battles due to the fact that we're so close in age. Uh, he was eight months younger than I was. And you know what the worst part is? I had to get an outside view of how he more or less copied me for the fact that he looked up to me for a little bit. But nobody ever fucking told me that. Like, you need to say shit to me or I get pissed. And the stupid part is... I want a younger brother because I want somebody normal. I want somebody I could play with. I want, like, I want a younger brother just because I wanted somebody that would. Well, I thought I thought about do I want a younger brother? Do I want an older brother? But I'm like, I don't want somebody telling me what to do. I already have one of those motherfuckers, and he's an asshole. I don't want somebody stronger than me and taller than me and bigger than me. It all fucking happened. <laughs> That's the funny part. Motherfucker came here short. I already could fight like a motherfucker. Got bigger stock. I'm like, God damn. It's like, <laughs> it's like the devil grand this wish. I said I didn't want him to be bigger than me. I said I didn't want him to be stronger than me. I didn't say I didn't want him to be older than me. Only one of these bitches were right. <laughs> so, as time progressed, he did get bigger. I did start off as an asshole because, well, I never had a good example of what a good older brother was. Like, I did have multiple, but one of them constantly masturbated and has autism. The other one apparently has a uh, mind of a child. Like, uh, started 14, 15 year old, and he absolutely loved school. Well, his version of school and my version of school were probably not the same, or maybe it was. I don't flip it now. Grew up in different time zones, <sighs> time spans, because he's 40 now. I'm 25. If not, he's probably about, no, no, he's 40. I just don't know how old 40. So there's a 20 year age gap, and he's the oldest, and I'm not even the youngest. The youngest would be. Is he? 19? 18? I don't know. Do they count if, like, nobody's really together anymore? <laughs> I don't really remember how old Dougie was. I just know that Abney is 20, and that's because I was recently told that. And I just know that Abney and Dougie were the youngest two, and Dougie was younger than Abney. I just don't remember if it was a year, if it was two years, or if it was, like, Dave and I, just a couple months apart. I just remember Dougie's the youngest. But I assume it's a couple of years. So if the youngest is 19, the oldest is 40, do you see that age gap? And then there was a couple that were in the 30, like Skylar ended up recently passing away. Uh, March 26th, which I didn't even realize was <laughs> five days after her fucking birthday. And uh, Brian passed away when he was uh, 17, I think it was. TJ passed away when he was... 11, maybe 13. TJ passed away in one of the house's living rooms. Brian passed away in foster care. Skylar passed away in the home yet again. 
and everybody else is split up in 2016 and like lies are always spread no matter in what department no matter what the prestigious title is like if they're human they're flawed apparently the most perfect human they killed and i say it like that because how the fuck is he gonna be perfect and he's still murdered is it because he questioned the king is it because he rivaled the king? Is it because he was more popular than the king? I don't flippin' know. Y'all know the story better than me, and somebody might tell me the story, but, like, you probably should hurry. Um, so, how I come to think about that is there's no such thing as perfe perfe eh, perfection eh, because perfection is perception, and perception-based, what I think is perfect may not be what you think is perfect, and what you think is perfect may not be what I think is perfect. I think like that, not everybody else does. And I do not try to force my thoughts and opinions. I just say them until people tell me shit to pick up. And I'm like, all right, that's one less person I've got to be around. One less person I want to be around. There's not enough money in this world to make me want to do the shit you want me to. And also, I don't have the value for them to want to. Because like, well, how many people can you get to value? Because that's how we're going to determine your true value. Or how much work can you do and produce for us so we can get this... A big check where you get this little check. And don't get me wrong, there's always going to be some type of thing that's going to be currency. I just wish it was more fair. But what's fair? <laughs> we all play with the cards that we're dealt with, right? Until we can't. Middle school years. I would say they were better than the elementary school years. I definitely had less anxiety. I did have a panic attack one time in math class. And I don't really get lie. I didn't even know it was a panic attack. Like I said, most of my education came on later in life. I had to do my DIY psychology because, <laughs> well, financially, the doctor wouldn't see me. And for the fact that I wore masks so often, well, what do you mean there's something wrong with them? Aside from, oh, yeah, more elementary memories. I did get in trouble for, uh, I remember doing these two acts of kindness for a gal, which has always been driven in my mind. And the only reason I forgot is because, do you not know who you're talking to and listening to? Do you think I speak clear? Clear enough for you to listen, but straight and airily story-wise, nah, it going everywhere. Why? Because I'm trying to get you guys to really know me. I said, I'm asked to Ivy portraying because, well, shit, I got to get money some way. I just don't get my Oscar. <laughs> but I wouldn't want it anyways. Um, this gal, her name was the name of a state. And the thing about this gal was, I thought she was great. She was my first crush in the States. And I was just like, girl, whatever you need, I was taught to help those that need help. And if I can do good for myself, I can do good for you too. So what you need, the sweatshirt? Okay. Office, why? Well, your belongings are yours, her belongings are hers. I don't really know if that's a fucking line, but I'm assuming that's what they're trying to tell me. Well... I thought I was being nice. She said she was cold and I was fine. So I was like, well, this is my jacket. My parents don't gave it to me. It was probably one of my brothers at some point or another. So like, it's going to get passed on to somebody. But why not you? Because you cold. You can give it back to me at the end of the day. But no. Office. Okay. As in I'm in trouble. I didn't get suspended, but felt like I can't be nice because I like her. I can't be nice because she like me. I can't be nice because she cold. Teacher probably saw said something. I don't freaking know. Story number two. She needed some money for lunch or some shit like that. And I'm just like, well, I ain't really rich like that. But uh, <laughs> I ain't strapped for cash. I used to get allowance at one point or another. So, like I said, here you go. A couple bucks, though. Back in the office. Ah, shit. Oh. What now? And it was because of that simple act of kindness. And I thought I was being nice. I thought I was being friendly. And to some of you guys, you might say yes. So I'm just like, why the fuck am I behind me? What the fuck is up with this confusion? You're not supposed to help people that need help. Is it because kids lie? But who teaches them to? Some kids just lie naturally. And some people are taught to. I was taught to lie. And I didn't like to. By well, don't you want to keep this? Well, <laughs> I don't know anything better. And I don't know anything more. So <laughs> Lisa Miles will stick with the ones that like me, appreciate me, love me. Know how to use me to the way that I don't realize, oh, hmm. If I treated others like they treated me, would I still be seen as the way that they see me? No. I learned my own show. I learned how to do myself like the lady does. Well, I told you all, you wouldn't really know. Behind closed doors and in front of them, 
Everybody tells a different story. I try to keep mine the same as much as I can. <sighs> but sometimes it's easier said than done. And sometimes it can't be. Sometimes I can't be too happy and can't be. I don't know, it made sense, but it doesn't really. Middle school years, like I said, better. I was able to, due to the school switching, make different friends. I would say better friends, but friends I end up just not really connecting with and just not really communicating with just because, I don't know, I didn't feel like they were for me, more or less. And there's millions of reasons why things go the way that they do. I just, I feel myself drifting from certain things when I do at this point in time. I just drift away. But back then, like, I used to want to fight and hold on to certain things, but it's just like, if it's meant to stay, it's meant to stay. And if it's meant to go away, then let it go. Okay? Okay? You ain't got to worry about it. Okay? Okay? If it was yours, it would still be. But it's not so. Who are you kidding? <laughs> Yourself, that's it. So, met some good people, lost some good people, kept at least, like, one from back then, but at the same time, I don't know what good is. Good for the times, man. Good community, good energy. I don't really know what good is. The environment that I was raised up in, I was raised to give care, but was I cared for? Individually? Not really. I always like to help because, well, that's the only time I got attention. <laughs> Everybody loves the helpful one, but they don't like the mean one, they don't like the messy one, they don't like the crazy one, so, well, I know how to be pleasant publicly privately there's a mess around me like if you were to see my car if you were to see my room you'd be like oh my gosh did a tornado hit it no just me i forgot where i put something and i lost something again and uh, i got distracted by another thing and it was like huh. <laughs> just me no tornado just e i just try to be like high school years some chick started calling it ethanite or something like <laughs> i love it <laughs> Ethanitis. If I could spell it, maybe I'll title it that shit. <laughs> but no, it's probably something more simpler than that, like autism or BPD or... I wouldn't say bipolar because my ups and downs are a lot quicker than that. Like, it's a lot of things, but does anybody want to take the time and energy? I did because, well, shit, if I got to be me, at least I know what the fuck I'm working with. And people say, what's wrong with you? Wow. It all started when I was born. And we'll continue the story once I'm done with this. <laughs> so, I got my snacks for a walk back. And I did my little joke. She didn't really laugh, but honestly, most of my jokes are for me because, well, you're supposed to, have, you're supposed to perform for your target audience. And it's hard to make other people laugh, especially if they don't want to. Especially if they don't like liking other things. So it's just like, well, at least if I'm going to make somebody laugh, you may as well be me. So don't ask me what I'm laughing for because it might make you look at me like, somebody get that gun. Or like, <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? Like, it all depends. Certain jokes I just won't tell you guys because, man, bitch, I, I want to get a gun and blow my brains out too. The fuck you think? You think you what? You think being around me is hard? Try being me 20 fucking 777. <laughs> Because it's just a 24-7, but now that's how bad it is. That's the point. Or good it is, because it all really just depends on how you think about yourself. Self-love, ladies and gentlemen, I just didn't really learn all that well. Well, I learned it later on, later on in life. Like, the worst things that you should ever get, a, could ever get addicted to are humans, narcotics, and attention. And I got addicted to all three. Shit was horrible. That's the point. <sighs> Middle school years. Met some good people, lost some good people, kept a couple. But some of the things that I did learn from them, I was able to be able to branch off into other friendships just from meeting them and all this and all that. And I would just say, <laughs> in the most cliche of the way when I think about it, because I've been told by somebody to stop saying that because I don't like to hear it. And it's just like, you yeah, know, it's true in a sense. Like, I don't ever think, because I do believe in the whole entire reincarnation spirituality like i wouldn't say i'm one of those spiritual hippies that like would talk your ear off and try to sell you anything like i'm not one of those but there's just so many things i i've seen experienced that just can't be explained and other people be like it's all science and it's all this and it's all that and it's just like well it's something 
I'm choosing to say spirituality, to say it's science. Y'all can say it's God and like we're all saying the exact same thing. We just speak it differently. Like rather you're praying, rather you're manifesting, rather you're sending good vibes. Aren't you all saying the same? You're just saying it differently. Rather you're saying kill, rather you say eliminate, rather you say take out. Aren't you all saying the exact same things? Rather you say shut the fuck up, rather you say shh, rather you say let's not speak about this right now. Rather you say like it's still the exact same thing. It's just the way that you word things. That's one thing I absolutely hate about life is people word things differently for them to be able to use the disguise of incredulous. Like, oh, I didn't say that. I said, let's have some fun. <laughs> what the fuck did you mean? The fuck do you define as fun? Huh? Let's have some fun. <laughs> what you trying to do? Hmm? Huh? But you know, I just like to see you naked. <laughs> JK, JK, JK. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I you know. You about that, dude. And it's just like, no, oh, fuck you. Just say it with your chest or don't. And certain things I wouldn't say with my chest, so it's like, eh. And it's not like in a sexual way. I just learned to bottle up my emotions and feelings because as a child, I was taking care of others while others weren't really taking care of me. So what am I to do when I feel like this? I used to share my thoughts and opinions, but remember how that happened in my elementary time? I don't know why I'm getting in trouble for this. I was just trying to help the chick. And then, yeah, there, I will admit there are some things I probably did get in trouble for because I need to get in trouble for. <laughs> uh, oh, another memory from my childhood. Dude was my best friend back then. I don't even know what the fuck I did. That's the fucked up part. <laughs> need the dude in the fucking nuts. And also, when I was really young, I decided for myself and because of how others would judge me. Because when the teachers knew that I had heart issues... They would take a little bit softer on me. They'd, like, they'd tell the other kids five laps. And it's like, Ethan, you do two or you do three or you do as many as you can. And other kids would clearly get pissed because like, the fuck's wrong with this kid? What the fuck's wrong with this kid? The school system at work, ladies and gentlemen. The fuck's wrong with this kid? He looks normal. He looks just like us. Well, not really because we're all Caucasian and he's not. But like, he looks like us for the most part. He talks like us for the... No, not really. He does have an accent. I don't really know if I had an accent. No, I'm pretty sure I probably did when I was younger. I don't really know. But <laughs> I was definitely a foreign kid in that small town. Like, it sounds like a movie the more I think about it. Because how the fuck do you explain... <sighs> when I say a small town, I mean the exact same kids that played baseball, played soccer, played basketball, played football. Just a couple kids did or didn't. That's about it. Like, you would see the exact same kids basically on every fucking team. So, at some point, another same kids were, like, star players of all things. Because, well, that's as many kids as they will get. Like, I don't even know what the fuck the graduating class would have been if I actually stayed throughout that time span to graduate there. But I do realize it was so small for me to be seen as the different kid was so fucking easy. Which is like, white, 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 chocolate. White, 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 white. Yeah, still the only chocolate one. Huh. Okay. Okay. Like, it's it's not easy to hide that. And, like, for the longest time, we're the only chocolate community. Until a mocha community. No, it's not mocha. Mulatto community came in. And I don't know which one was which. I don't know if it was, like, the mom and dad, the dad and the mom. I don't fucking know. Or if it was the same situation as mine where the kid was adopted. I don't remember. And for a hot second... The lady, very good at befriending people, very good at that, I will say that. Good at conversating, but not always good at maintaining and keeping because of the toxicity of her personality when it's fully encompassed. But very good at communicating and making friends. And the old man, oh, well, yeah, somebody snapping at you every time you try to make, meet new people, make friends, stuff like that. Like, he couldn't have a life. Outside of the kids and outside of work, from my understanding, if he wasn't doing those two, he couldn't do anything else. Like, the only person he was friends with, he still couldn't be friends with, but she could be friends with everybody that she meets. And that was a good thing and a bad thing for a lot of things because it opened some doors, but also some of those doors shouldn't have been open. <laughs> or because everything happens for a reason, that stupid cliche that I may or may have not said. It just happened to make the story better as I continue to try to regale, regale it. So having to deal with that, which is why I've been... I haven't been the best with picking significant others, like dating. Oh, no. Fucking. <laughs> it's even worse. We'll get into that. Um, there's just so many things I end up screwing up and thinking about. Like, I've always considered myself to be a superior mindset. But, like, the more I think about it, I'm like, oh, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm just not as stupid as the other ones. Like, I'm stupid, but, like, I'm not retarded. 
or I'm retarded, but I'm not stupid. Like, there's something that keeps me away from being like, because people will say I'm smart, they'll say I'm wise, they'll also say I'm weird, they'll also say I'm crazy, I'm extreme, I'm different, I'm authentic, I'm unique. Like, the word that they would use, rather, for the good or bad, I don't know. It all depends how you define the shit. It all depends on what team you're on, in my personal opinion, in my mindset, but for me, it's just like, could you give me like a DSM-5 type of definition? Because I need to know what the fuck these words mean when you say I'm weird, when I'm authentic, when I'm extreme, when I'm, uh, ex- yeah, extreme, when I'm, I'm unique, when I am, um, am I, what am I, am I autistic? Am I BPD? Am I schizophrenic? Am I bipolar? Am I, am I Asperger's? Am I, am I ADHD? Am I ADD? Which essentially is the same, just with the hyper or not, but at the same time, you could or could not, or just in certain situations, like, there's so many, like, oh, which one am I, and I don't really know the other personality ones, that, it's just those are the main ones I more or less have been studying on, because they uh, seem to resonate with me the most, I didn't even talk about how the fuck everything just felt weird to me, well, yeah, I did about the internal part, but I now remember, more or less, when I was younger, that more or less, or molested, that happened when I was younger, too, I didn't know I was molested. That was the crazy part. One time I was just laying in bed as like a high school. I'm just thinking about the shit that I went through. While I was younger. I'm just like, hmm. In the middle of the woods, pulled back my penis. Not a doctor. Not my parent. <gasps> Why didn't anybody tell me I was molested? Why the fuck didn't anybody tell me this? Oh shit, that's me telling you. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, that's how good the supervision was. Honestly, I would say I wasn't supervised. It's just go to school so we don't go to jail and don't do that so we don't go to jail. Also, make up the story so we can keep you and this and that and make sure you say this person does that and that person does this and it's not true, but it's enough to keep us going. Like, I'll say every single year, aside from my fucking junior year, because that's when they got me. Well, got the whole entire family. CPS would always interview us. But the funny part is, even my senior year, I had a CPS interview. I'm like, really? K through 12? Shit! Shit! And the fucked up part is, I was just over here ogling over the fucking... The one that we had in Holt Lake, I'm like, she pretty, she pretty. Turns out she was a twin. I'm like, oh my god! Oh my god! You know what? I've never dated the twin. And I don't even think I've fucked the twin. And that kind of hurts me, because I'm like, oh my god, I'm always like twins. I don't think I ever liked it enough to type into a porn thing, but like... I, <laughs> They both were attractive in my head. I'm just like, I don't give a fuck. I'll talk to these ladies as long as you want me to. <laughs> yeah, you know, as a young child, I was. Like, I wouldn't say I was a womanizer, but I definitely always wanted to. Like, there was no question in my mind that I loved women more than men. But I was young. I was experimenting. There are some shit that I did do when I was younger. I'm just like, huh. Explains why people would think I could be bisexual. Like, not anymore, but while I was younger, maybe, but every kid's a little bit gay, right? No? Okay, maybe just me. I'll tell you this, not about all I'm telling you about is first ever person to give me a head was a dude. The fucked up part is I wasn't even old enough to really care or give a shit. But supervision, ladies and gentlemen, when it's not that good, you can do whatever the fuck you want to. Whew. That's why when I meet people are like wild and crazy, I'm just like, ooh. So how bad was your childhood on scale of one to we should have been dead? <laughs> well, I don't know. In the psych ward. Uh, actually, some of my exes that I, like, I didn't date, but I fucked around with. One of them actually took a knife to her grandparents. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Another one of them apparently was an incest child and had uh, kids with her sibling. I'm just like, that one, that could be like rape, strong-armed. But at the same time, like, ah, and it's like, I keep going down a list of like, think of how, like the most normal chick that I fucked around with that I deemed to be quote unquote, normal, whatever the fuck that is. She was a college chick that went to Northwood, but I also fucked around with a college chick that went to Saginaw, but they went to college for two different things. And I'm just like, I don't know. I got to screw up Northwood chick a little bit longer than the. Side note, once I'd say like she was the most normal chick that I fucked around with because every chick was, and it probably has to be crazy. Like I feel like there has to be a certain level of crazy to enjoy the energy that I am, and why people say I am this and I am that. It's because, bitch, I don't know the difference. 
Do you know what the fuck I was around? Do you know what the fuck I saw? Do you know what the fuck I did? Do you? Know? I don't even know what the fuck I saw half the time or did or this or that. Like, I was told at one point or another. I know I should probably continue telling about my middle school years, but did you guys not listen? I don't remember shit most of the times. <laughs> about the younger years, at least. But uh, when I was younger, I was told that I was up more than I was asleep. And I do believe that. I am more or less of a night owl than anything else because I, I wouldn't say I hate the sun, but I do feel sun sensitive. I, I did do work, manual labor, for four summers, not necessarily four years, like maybe three years, but four summers straight, so I could pay for my green card, so I could stay here, just for me to lose my green card like a year and a half later, so it's just like, wait, wait a second, wait a second, what? It cost me $7,000, just cost me 500 more for a paperwork, that might or might not, I'm just like, fuck it, at this point, for what I have plans to... I ain't got to worry about that shit. So it's just like I put in the work when I need to, when I don't want to, when other people's need me to. But when it's for me, it's just like, no, I don't want it. Even though I'm pretty sure I walked a total of three miles just to get things that I want to. So I figure, well, if I'm not going to be here for longer than most would anticipate, I might as well treat myself to things that I would enjoy. Because, well, I was a caretaker ever since 2002. It's 2023. That I, yeah, there's some breaks to me, but at the same time, if I wasn't shouldering, shouldering the weight physically, I was doing it emotionally because all these emotions somebody had to go through and guess who they came to? Exactly. E. Emotionally, people would be to me like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? All the things I see on TV. Smile, give good advice, don't push on dick. Why? Because that's some fucked up and creepy, rapey shit. I'm not trying to be one of those dudes, but what's that shit? They all say I fit the description, but different descriptions describe me. What? I'm not one of those guys, but who's speaking it? Who's saying it? Who's trying to pin me for something that I did or didn't do? Did I? Do I remember to? I did my body, but I did consciously? Probably not. Maybe did? I don't know. I just tried to do the best I can do. For the environment that I grew up in, for the things I did learn, I used to think I was smart, but back then, oh no. And it wasn't until I got smarter about the shit that I do do, like the people that I spend my time and energy around shouldn't always be do do. <laughs> From the line that has been repeated to me through Facebook and verbally. If you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. So what does that mean? Well, a lot of people would call me friend, but I don't always see that shit. So I walk along a lot of times, even though people would say, here, come, E, here, come, E, here, come, E, here. Why don't you come through? Because how many times do I have to come through, but you guys don't? But where do they come to me? Nowhere, because I don't reside in places. I just have houses, not homes. I haven't had a home since I was born, if you ask me personally. Like, some of the things I used to believe until I learned, oh, manipulation, gaslighting. Ah, uh, what was also? Guilt trip, and that was the favorite one. That was the favorite toy. Uh, really? Spent all this money, got all you guys here, and you can't fucking smile for a photo? Sometimes swear words would be sprinkled in a little bit. Oh, really? Something, something, you can't smile. Like, honestly, I don't even fucking like to smile. At this point, it's just a reaction when this camera comes up, more or less. Just because how much it was ingrained in my brain, it's like fucking PTSD. But what war did you do? Um, Life 2002 to life 2023. Y'all know about that shit, or is it just fucking me? Everybody lived differently. Y'all live lavishly with the fuck's the streets. Yeah, yeah, um, financially, you probably lived a little bit better than that shit, but when you fucking get ran by a tyrant, you didn't even know you had shit. I didn't realize we had money until I got older. Wait a second. Wait a second. We weren't poor. Yes, 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 we were poor because we had government assistance. But on top of that, we also had some other type of shit. And it's just like, if you guys would have managed it better, we probably could have afforded more. But because the lady was like, I want, I want, I need, I need, husband, get me this shit. And she would spend it because they had joint accounts. Tip, if I ever get married, <laughs> she can't ever remind me of that lady. And two, no joint accounts, because fuck you for making me broke, us broke, because you want what the fuck you want, regardless of what the fuck it costs. I was trying to get something for the kids, and you got shit for you. Hmm. Funny, you get new pillow, you get new dog that we take care of, you get new plant that ends up dying, you get, you get, what do we get? 
more headache and heartache because of the shit that you guys argue about. You know what's funny? All the money issue fights are because of you. And the accountability she didn't like to take. Like, what? Me? I'm the problem? Of course you guys would say that. No, we're just making you remember that you're the bad guy. Don't forget that shit. And the only reason I know she's the bad guy is because when she leaves a place, it's like a bad taste. When he leaves a place, they're like, we miss that face. We miss that energy. I'm just like, wow. So I'm not the only one that sees. Like, if you spend enough time with either one of them, and I'm pretty sure any caretaker that has had to take care of either one of them, I don't know if they, like, I would assume at one point they would swap out, depending on what stations they're in. But currently, they're in an old folks' home together, so they'll probably have caretakers that's seen both of them. They will realize that the good and the bad is just night and day. Like, I don't know how the fuck they got together. Like, I have fucking thoughts, but I always have thoughts. I never not have thoughts. If I ever did not have thoughts, I would probably be a little bit bitter. Okay, that was a little bit live, like 0. 0.5, 25, like a couple seconds, I'll see a white page and then bam, back to bullshit. And that's like every four to five months. So it's just like, when's the last time I've seen the bam, back to the bullshit? I couldn't fucking tell you time to joke to me half the times. So. Um, that's the point. Night and day, their personalities, the reason why I think they got together is because of low self-esteem he has. She, <laughs> she had a man from the story that I was told by him. So I believe it to be more true than what she says because she'll embellish anything. My husband's a cop. He's a sheriff. No, he's not. He's a retired Navy. My husband's a deputy. No, he's not. He's a retired Navy. My husband's a... something important to make other people back off because she started the fucking car war fight and I'm just trying to get my fucking heart checked. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Those Ann Arbor trips are the main reason why as soon as I became old enough to say fuck it i said that shit because you gotta drive me she thought i was gonna drive i don't even know the way there because i was so scared to even learn the bitch like ah just don't kill me don't kill me don't kill me. literally jesus take the goddamn wheel because this shit was scary i shit you the fuck not like when i tell you i don't know how the fuck i made it this long i don't know and if people knew the truth i'm just telling you guys that most of y'all would just ignore anyways then you would know <laughs> i shouldn't have made it this long statistically technically speaking like on paper this motherfucker should be dead that's like it, i'd make a great ass fucking movie if you guys get the fucking parts correct and if you watch the videos and like there's really no order because what the fuck's order <laughs> land air water love back to the point <sighs> there really wasn't one middle school years a little better high school years i'd say it was the best because i was more into my mask I did have a suicide attempt in high school, though. And, like, I don't count it as a suicide attempt, but technically speaking, I guess it would be considered a suicide attempt because I swallowed all my pills. But literally, and I will tell you this every fucking time you ask me, why did you swallow those pills? I wanted to see what the fuck happened. I did! I literally did! And for a little bit, you see this right here? Yeah, see? It really don't, eh, it's not there anymore. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> It did show up in a couple of my uh, college. I was never going to go to that bitch. I did, technically speaking, but it's not the same shit that we're talking about. Um, it did show up in a couple of my uh, high school photos, I think it was. I just don't remember. Probably my... No, I actually did it uh, during... I, I didn't even intentionally think about that. But if I remember correctly, I did during uh, semester testings. And I was in the hospital because I took all my pills. And what happened was I threw up a couple of them, a bunch of them. Like, I don't really remember. I do know I did throw up. I passed out and I hit some type of banister thing or like it was going downstairs. I just remember it was wood. I hit it and hit my gums. I could feel the floor, but I couldn't feel the pain. Like I was so fucking numb. And I felt that feeling like three, if not four more times past that. And I'm probably going to be a fifth time. So I felt that. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, there was a complete nervous system shutdown. Like, I wouldn't have known how to explain it back then. But now with the intelligence that I have, it's like, oh, my God, the smarter I get, the stupider I realize I was. I know it's not a fucking word, but now it is. Because neither was fucking WAP and all the fucking shit that is now words. So it's just like, <laughs> bitch, it don't matter. Clearly. Mind over matter. If I don't care, then, no. Why does it look? <laughs> Not run free on me, bitch. What? Nah, you paying for shit. Like, what? Nah, you waiting in there. That's the point of it. I lost it. 
I literally lost the chain of thought. That's the point of, I guess, <laughs> middle school years. Wasn't the best, but it was definitely better. Like I said, I was coming to my mask more. As high school hit, I was able to, I would say, gravitate more around people because when I was a little bit younger, I would say in the middle school years, I used to spend a lot of time out with my cousins. And we used to be on this, oh my God, I fucking hated this shit. I absolutely, it was worse than school. It was always on Sundays. And the worst part is, I shit you not, from 8 to 2 o'clock, it was basically like Sunday school. It probably was Sunday school. What the fuck? I went to two churches, essentially. Like, there was a Western church I went to in Hot Lake. And then there was another church that was, like, on a bus ride. And that shit was scary to me because we had to get off on buses. And we had to stick with a group. My cousins were two years older than me, so therefore they're in a different group than me. But I'm like, I need to stick with them because I don't know what I I don't know any fuckers. And my cousins used to go on that thing, like, every fucking week, apparently. And there was time, like, it would always be every time I went over to uh, my aunt's house. It's not my aunt. Like, technically speaking, nobody's related to me, but family's family, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> I just defined it to me as family just people you can't fuck, you should fuck, but some people do. And sometimes it's figuratively and sometimes it's literally. It's just all depends. But we go there and I shit you not. It was from 8 to 2, terrified the fuck out of me. Like, in some parts it was cool and fun, but other parts I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's like school, but worse. Because I don't know where the fuck we were going. I just knew that we were on this bus, we'd have ice cream, not ice cream. We'd have cereal in the cup. I did like that shit. I was like, yeah. Mm, good. I almost said that B word, not bitch. <laughs> this shit good. I, I actually like that so much. I brought it into my personal life. <laughs> Fuck making a bowl, bitch. You ever tried cereal in the cup? Oh, it just hit different. Mm. <laughs> just like, mm. That's why I think sometimes it can be autistic and on top of other things. <laughs> so that was the only thing I really enjoyed about it. We traveled all around, I would assume, the Ross Common, maybe Gaylord. Whoever fucks up by Holton Lake area. <laughs> and, like, some of the things, it was definitely about God. I just don't know what version. If I don't know if it was Methodist, I don't know if it was Lutheran, I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was God-related. I'm just like, okay, well, why the fuck is he everywhere in my life? <laughs> like, my whole ch entire childhood was literally brought up to be God. And I wouldn't say I'm atheist, but I definitely don't believe in the biblical sense. I more than believe in the Bible as a manual of some sorts, but, like, not always, because from my understanding, there's a lot of uh, books actually taken out of the quote-unquote original Bible, because it's not the original Bible, because the original Bible is 100, and, it's either 150 or 180 books thicker, and it's just like, bitch, is the Bible light, and you ain't telling me? Mm, 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 mm. You're not supposed to believe everything that you see on the internet. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. So does that mean all the jobs I've applied for that have accepted me and tried to make appointments with me I shouldn't believe to? So does that mean all these hot women that want to screw me aren't really around the corner? So does that mean it's just discretion, ladies and gentlemen, and discernment? You have to be able to know what the fuck you are doing. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I more or less say I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know how the fuck I made this long. And sometimes I'm kidding and sometimes I'm not. You are the judge of that. Because, you know, sometimes... We're just lucky enough. I wouldn't say it was luck. It was like if if you asked me personally, and you're not going to, what I think about life, I think this was the devil's design. The devil absolutely loves me. Because I, <laughs> I out of this was just intense fucking... Ah, 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 but you can't scream here. Ah, 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 you can't scream here. Ah, ah, you can't scream here. Where the fuck can I scream? Nowhere, motherfucker. You have a penis. You're not allowed to show any emotions. You only show joy and anger. That's it. Or you're assumed to be gay. That's it. Why can't I show emotions and be straight? Wait, why do I give a fuck if you guys assume I'm homosexual or heterosexual? Wait, why the fuck do you guys tell me gay meant fucking homosexual and gay actually means happy? People used to do shit gaily, and they never meant sucking dicks out in public. They just meant happily, like, frolicking. Y'all got this education shit different from me. Like, how are you all going to call me smart and then stupid just because you don't get what the fuck I'm saying? Like, sometimes it's smart, sometimes it's stupid. It just all depends who's listening to me. <laughs> Life just be confusing me, so what do I do when things confuse me? all now and just... You know, like, there's there's an automatic quit button anytime. Like, it's not always easy, but like, 
I'm not the one to have track marks on me so people be like, psychology, you know how there's nothing wrong with them. Just, he thinks differently, abnormally. Like, he doesn't have cuts all of himself, but if you actually took a good look at my body, there's a lot of scars, and I don't just mean the chest one. <laughs> but do we want to discuss of how these happen? Would you believe me if I told you? Self-attacking. I didn't realize in the ways that I used to hurt myself because I was too uneducated to realize. Oh, oh. the reason why I'm so fit is because I'm mentally unfit, but people can just think that's my favorite joke. It is, but it's actually true. Like, who the fuck walks five miles, roughly? Well, mile and a half there, mile and a half back is three. And then a mile and a half there, a mile and a half back yet again, just for some gummy bears and 99 cent swishers because he about to do something funny with it. He about to do something good with it. He about to have some fun with it. Like, who else would fucking do that? I could drive, ladies and gentlemen. I have that ability. Like, I shouldn't always be driving. I'm not saying because I'm high. It's just because in certain instances, it's just horrible for me. Like, I got horrible, not horrible, I got bad night blindness in a sense. I would say night blindness, but it depends if the car lights are too bright. Sometimes shells play around with me too much, and I think that's why I might have acute schizophrenia sometimes. Just because I'm like, nah, those shadows aren't supposed to move like that. And this is even before the drugs came, regardless if you want to believe it or not. Why I was screwing around with this one chick, I used to walk her home at night. And there's certain nights, like, there were snow piles. For some reason, I thought there was a fucking lion or a tiger. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. oh, my God. oh no, it's just... Nigga, there's not even lions or tigers in fucking Michigan. And if there is, I think they're mountain lions. But at the same time, we're in a fucking suburban area. Why the fuck would there... There's not even a damn zoo anywhere near... Why the fuck would you... Got the ball through some around my fucking brain. But how do I tell people this? They used to like pick out and say, I don't want them to lock me out of the pad room. Just put a bullet through, okay? It's a lot cheaper anyway. Like, why constrain me and constrict me? You're not going to confirm me to be what the fuck you want to be. Remember how you tried to do it in my younger years? Yeah, this is probably what made me the exact same person I am today. A little bit crazier, but not like that crazy. Like, oh my gosh, you can't trust me around money. You can't trust me around kids. You can't trust me around women. Just crazy. Like, oh my gosh, you can't trust me around food. You can't trust me around the soccer ball. You can't trust me around... Actually, you can't trust me around weed. Although I did meet some people I can't. Um, who else can't you trust me around? I'd, I'd probably be trying to play your video games if you ain't paying attention. Like, I ain't too bad at it. I grew up in video games, porn, and... TV. <laughs> I say porn like, oh, yeah, I did. I used to watch porn before I masturbated because I didn't know why the fuck I had an erection. Uneducated and unsupervised. I shit you not. From 2009 to about 2014, I would say, I didn't masturbate. Started in 2015. Late bloomer, but like, 17, I ain't too bad. <laughs> You're telling me you've been watching porn since you were 11 and you didn't start masturbating until 17. Bullshit. Sounds like it, but it's not. Like I said, I had other shit that I was doing when I was younger. I would say definitely my youngest years, I did a lot of things that kids my age should have not been doing on top of just taking care of my siblings that weren't my siblings, where my siblings are, are, I don't know how the fuck you want to define family and love. It just all depends on how you do it. Like, the way that they treat each other and the way that I saw certain people give up and all this and all that, I'm just like, Eh, just a group on more or less. Like, do family do what they do? Maybe. If nobody mentally evaluates others to be able to tell them they're actually too mentally incompetent to be able to do the things that they're doing, but um, they are doing their best to give the love and attention that they can, but because they are not mentally competent to do the things that others can that have the exact same skills, they actually lack the capacity to be able to do it to the fullest. Well, they tried their best. But because nobody said that with a PhD, it's just like, well, they fucked me up. Or I fucked myself up. Or we all fucked me up. Or I fucked everybody else up. Or something about fucking up. It's just... Accountability has to be on you. But at the same time, I do believe sometimes the community is the reason why you are the way that you are. And one of my siblings literally was born, quote unquote, normal. Whatever the fuck that means. But his parents, or his grandparents, I don't remember which one did it, but somebody in his biological family, that's all I remembered, literally shook him and shook his head up against the wall and gave him such scrambled brains and brain damage, he was literally studded from growth and had seizures, and that was literally the reason why he died. He was born fine. 
he was born like a, I don't know, probably like a 815 credit score Caucasian person that probably could have been anywhere between 5'7 to maybe like 5'9, 5'10. I don't flipping know as genetic code would have been like, but he could have been, I don't know, the next oppressor. <laughs> well, he's going to tell jokes. <laughs> but because of the way that his system and his whole entire family was supposed to be set up, it's just, nope, shaking baby. And I'm just like, he's older than me. And this is why I've always found out, found it hard to just respect my elders because y'all don't realize most of my older siblings weren't older than me mentally, just physically like you're older, but <laughs> listen to your younger older brother. Now <laughs> I should have went by that though. I wasn't as witty as I am now. It's one thing I, like, I'm so in my head and I always used to be in my head, but the wittiness and the jokes, they all came later in time. I used to think I was smart. Now I think I'm stupid, which other people th think I'm smart. And I'm just like, eh, smarter than I used to be. I won't do half the shit that I used to. I'm disgusted to even think about. But when you don't know what the difference between right and wrong is when you're unsupervised, it's just like, I just know as long as I'm not being too cheerfully loud, as long as I'm not pretty sure I probably hit some of my siblings, which is why I used to get yelled at for uh, thinking it was funny and thinking things are a game, and I still fucking do, so it doesn't really change my brain. It just... Things I suppressed. But I, I know for sure I had aggressive issues that I learned to just subside by being physically active because if I'm not hurting people, I can't get in trouble. If I hurt myself and I don't leave a mark, I didn't hurt myself. Now, did I? Exactly. Exactly. So I found ways to be able to still let out the aggression and anger and get unless I just absolutely hate getting yelled at. And how I solve issues is not necessarily how other people would, but sometimes like, oh, that's very great. And sometimes like, why the fuck would you even think about that? That's fucking stupid. That's redundant. And sometimes just like, how do you think that's going to be financially feasible? And sometimes it's just like, oh, 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 oh. you're dumbass. <laughs> There's just so many different ways that my mind works. It's just, what's right with me? I don't actively try to abuse people, force my thoughts and negative opinions on people. I don't actively try to harm people in any physical or emotional way. I just try to better grasp their identity and who they're trying to be if they don't really try, uh, if they don't really have an identity quite yet. But in certain instances, depending on who I'm questioning, it might seem like I am questioning their authority or their power. But what I think power is, is just what you assume is given. And if I give you power over me, well, <laughs> I do. And if I don't, well, <laughs> yet again, I don't. But there's an issue with that because I'm your parent. There's an issue with that because I'm the judge. There's an issue with that because I'm the officer. There's an issue with that because I am the authoritative person that is not being consciously aware of the way that I am abusing my power upon you. So let me fucking do it. I'm your fucking priest. I'm your pastor. I'm your parent. I'm your brother that's older than you. I am stronger. I am this. I am that. I am the asshole that's going to ruin you if you fucking let me. And if you don't, well, I'm still going to because I have the power over you. You think you can fucking fight me? You fucking pushy? You fucking child? You fucking weakling? I don't know what they thought. I never do. Like, sometimes I think I can enter into a predatory mindset, but would I ever? Not intentionally. Not purposely. The younger version of me is way more dangerous than the older version. Like, I could be dangerous, but I just look like I look. I tried to be better versions of me. If I would have continued the pathway that I was younger, yes, I would be differently. I've always related to... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I've always loved anime for the fact that I could relate to a lot of the main characters in certain aspects, like having a demon inside me sometimes or just like feeling like certain things I forgot for a good reason and certain things I just forgot because, I don't know, I just fucking forgot I'm always grateful that I didn't continue on the pathway that I started on. But at the same time, I always think I could be on a different one. But at the same time, I also feel as if I'm on the pathway that I am on for because it's the best one for me, regardless of what others may say or what others may assume. Because, well, they're always going to have opinions. 
And from my understanding of how life works, a lot of times the views will always be higher than the likes because they'll watch you, but they won't always support you. And just because they support you, it doesn't mean they support you. They just want to make sure that they get some of the shine from you because, well, you're so damn bright. Shined it up for me a little bit. Like, come on, you got all this money. You got all this attention. Come on, come on, just fuck me a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. You could lose a little bit. Like, it wasn't really that bad. Like, it was just a bad time. It was just a bad community. It was just a bad idea. Just keep, 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 keep helping me. But when you ask for help, pfft. remember when you had that shit? Come on, you could do it again. Come on, come on, come on. If you give a monster cookie, it might take your house and claim it to be theirs. If you give a monster cookie, they might hang you and say you're the one trespassing. If you give a monster cookie, it was the best story that I had never quite understood until I got old enough to see. It's not a mouse. It's a rat. But they won't snitch on you so quickly. They just know how to infest your home or your city. You yoke up in this bitch. Should be crazy. I learned from a lot of my mistakes, those I did do and those I didn't do. I held my breath in a lot of times I felt like I should have exhaled. I exhaled in places I felt like I should have held my breath, but it could be worse. I think about that every day. <laughs> and I know it's horrible because like, it's, it's different from thinking all oh, others have it worse because it's not others, it's me. I know it could have been worse. I know I could have done worse. I know, I know, I know, and I'm glad that it didn't get worse. I'm glad I'm not doing worse. I'm glad that some of the things I did when I was younger didn't bang up my body to the point where I'm not blind. Eh, colorblind maybe a little bit. Eye issues a little bit, but it could have been way worse. I used to... <laughs> another younger year shit. Uh, I don't remember how old I was at this, but when I was younger, I used to <laughs> take fucking flashlights just shining in my eyes. Like, mm. I do wide-eyed open shit like that both eyes. I don't fucking know if I had a favorite eye I'd leave it in longer. And another thing I used to do when I was bored in fucking classes I used to do it with both my eyes though. And I used to do this a lot. And what I liked about it is it made everybody's heads and faces look funny and fuzzy. And that's a lot of things I did that made me not pay attention in class because you're fucking boring. Like shit! You got me up in this bitch for 50 minutes and you ain't gonna tell no jokes whatsoever? And you're gonna be boring the whole entire time? And you ain't gonna be enthusiastic whatsoever? Bitch, somebody gotta make this fun and entertaining for me, because if you ain't gonna do it, I got to. That's what bothered me most of the time in school. It's like, I, did I have a learning issue, or did y'all have a teaching issue? Because from my understanding, the greatest teacher can teach anyone, even the hardest student. But first, you have to teach how the student learns. But teachers assume that, well, I don't assume all teachers do, but a lot of teachers assume that there's one way to be taught, and if you can't learn that way, then you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Okay, I'm stupid then. To you. I'm useless. To you. I'm bad. To you. But to everybody else, well, they have different views of me that you will never see because, well, you only see me in this structured area where I'm supposed to be prim and proper publicly, but privately? I'm sometimes a monster. I'm sometimes a hero. I'm sometimes this. I'm sometimes that. I don't really know. It just all depends, depends on which group I'm in. Because in a group full of people that are defined as bad, they would want me to do bad shit. So for me to be nice to the elderly, for me to be nice to kids, for me to be nice to anything, that would be seen as bad. But for me to kick them and abuse them, oh, that'd be seen as good. But in a good community, for me to do all that good shit, that'd be good. But for me to kick them and abuse them, that would be bad. And people don't always seem to perceive that. So it's just like, good and bad is just depending on which team you're on. And what I've come to learn in a lot of sports things is, People be friends on the opposite team. You just don't always know that shit. So it don't even matter if you're good or bad or you're seen as this or that. You could play for both teams. So what are you, an anti-hero, a vigilante, or just a human? I don't know. You are what you want to be. I just always wanted to be happy. I've always wanted to be helpful. I've always wanted to be things that I sometimes did and didn't strive to be. I didn't even realize until I got older I wanted to be a carpenter, but that didn't really work out for me. Like a carpenter of feelings, I build up people's confidence, I build up their attitude, I build up their niceness, I build up their reason to live, but <laughs> I ain't got shit for me. I ain't got nothing nice to say to me, but I can say a million nice things to you because, well, shit, 
Look at you. You got a full family, somebody that loves and cares about you. Look at you. You got this car. Look at you. You got these shoes. Look at you. You got your whole entire identity. You just let other people try to tell you who the fuck you're supposed to be. You can be whoever the fuck you want to, aside from whoever the fuck they don't want you to be, which is more or less your true self, so you should probably be them because after playing a part for so long, will you know which face is yours? That was my problem. I used to tell people, one of my favorite advices is, well, it used to be, I used to give unsolicited, uh, I used to give unsolicited advice, like dudes would do dick pics, don't ever do that shit. I'm glad I won't ever have a fucking child to live through that bitch. But unsolicited advice, my favorite one was, if you couldn't look yourself in the mirror anymore, that's how you know you've done things that you can't handle, or something like that. Because I used to give advice to a bunch of people ranging from the age yo- older than me, younger than me, and because, well, sometimes I've, like, I don't really know how to explain it when I say the things I do or feel the things I do. Because sometimes people say, like, you just know how to say the perfect things or you know how to say the right words or you just know how to put things together. And the only thing I can say about it is, is like, when I used to be able to feel my hair grow when I was younger, is I get, like, this tingling feeling, which I would call it, uh, connection to consciousness to source just because of the information i've learned with us if you believe in what i believe or i don't know some people might say it's a call from spirit or maybe god speaking through me speaking in tongues of some sort but something will tell me to say it and if you ask me to repeat it more or less i'm not going to like a lot of the things that i say in the videos that i've made regardless if it's on facebook regardless if it's on tiktok regardless if it's on youtube regardless if it's on snapchat a lot of the things that i say i would say 90 percent if not, maybe 88, are one time through and it's less, more or less of a source message where it's just like something said I had to say this because somebody's listening for this message, regardless if it's me, because sometimes it is, but I only listen to my own messages. It's the worst part. I'll listen to my, I'll rewatch my whole entire videos, at least my YouTube ones, sometimes my own TikToks or my own uh, uh, Snapchat, just because, I don't know, maybe it's narcissism a little bit, just like the own sound of my voice or just because I know Sometimes I need to hear it. Sometimes I need to be remembered of it. It just doesn't always mean it's going to hit for me. It's not always going to uh, resonate. But certain things that I did do, I did enjoy so much. It's just like, shit, I'm just going to put that shit on repeat. Hold on, government person. Bye, government person. Um, It just all depends on what it was that resonated or didn't resonate with me. And like... I said, I just fucking like it. Maybe it's the autism. Maybe it's the this. Maybe it's the that. It's what makes me who I am. It's what makes other people want to call me weird. What's other people make me want to call, uh, make other people want to call me good, bad, this and that. It's just like, you can label my brain wherever the fuck you want to, but I can't label it however the fuck I want to. I, if I had to give you it, I'd say BPD. And sadly, it'd have to be the second one. But not always just be, like... It wouldn't be the second one. It would be the... I want to say it's either the second one, the third one, or the first one. I know, that's three of them. But I just almost like the depressive one. But I wouldn't say a little bit of the second one just because I will admit in certain instances I do have chaos energy, but I feel as if I thrive more in those areas but i more or less in my personal opinion i try to say i try to calm them down compared to creating them so that's why i'm like "Ah." but in a lot of places that i remembered i learned to fucking drive a stick shift in a chaotic form i was literally in the middle of work had to drive a co-worker's car buddy's car while he drove the stick of the truck and i'm just like what the flip i literally learned how to take care of people more or less in a chaotic mode i've learned like Taking care of people is just more than physically lifting them up. It's the emotional aspect of talking to them, asking them how their day is, calling them, well, not necessarily call. well, yeah, calling them depending on uh, if they're elderly or even just mentally disabled, just to be able to check in with them. But there's many aspects to care that I didn't realize that I realized that I knew. I just, I just grew up with it. Like, the reason why I feel like I was doing so well when it comes to work with the residents and the elderly, well, elderly residents is what I meant, is because a lot of the caretaking I do for my siblings was the having to physically carry them, talking to them, carrying on the conversation even by myself because some of them were nonverbal, some of them were verbal, but they didn't really quite get what you were saying. And just some of them, like, 
it's just all flipping dependent. The range was so freaking wide range. And the crazy part is, I never thought of any of the things that I did as anything special. I'm just like, it's my life. It's what I do. It's what I've always done. Like, it's not special to me, which is why this line also I find to be very important. Even though it's a cliche line too. Uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I more or less say it's humanity, not as in just the cisgender or any of that shit. But it's because I do believe that what you do not always cherish, what you do not always see as something amazing, others will try to take that and monetize it so they can make so much more money because to you, that's your everyday. That's you. That's you. That's what you are used to and accustomed to. And depending on how your uh, community was, rather, if they hyped you, you'd be like, yeah, that's my shit. That's my shit. You can't tell me nothing. Or if your community didn't, then you might have a little bit of a fragile, more, uh, fragile mindset. But at the same time, that doesn't always mean if your community hyped you up, you're always going to believe that they were telling the truth. Or if your community didn't, you're not going to have uh, that. You're going to have a fragile mindset. At the same time, you can still have a hype mindset with no community help. And you can still have a broken mindset even with community help. It's just literally all individuals and why I've uh, been recently trying to remind myself is with every person I talk to, restart, 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 restart. Like even though you're similar to them, similar to them, similar to them, you're not who I think that I think you are. You're who you are, and I have to learn who you are before I b bunch you into something that you're not. So I will take the time. I'll take the energy, and as long as you're not being too rude, like because I do get in certain aspects in the way that other people communicate, it may come off as rude, but. Am I just choosing to be offended? Like, was it generally rude or am I choosing to be offended? There's certain questions that I feel as if people as a community should say these are rude questions. But to me, I don't think it's fucking rude questions, but it's just maybe style or taste. Like, how much money do you make? How many people have you been with? And I would just ask that to anybody. Not even people I would be in a relationship with. Like, I would just ask questions because I fucking want to know shit. Which could be a little bit scary because curiosity killed the cat. Well, call me Percy. Because... Well, where the fuck was the cat looking? If the cat saw something it shouldn't see, well, you know how life works. Pew, pew, somebody got to sleep with the fishes. Oh, shit. Is that what happened? Kitty got shot and got thrown in the lake or the river or wherever the people aren't going to see. Maybe in the pig pen. <laughs> uh, so it's just like it's rude to ask and it's rude not to ask. But I was never quite sure when it was all right to ask. And in certain instances, when I would get a whole spiel t done to me, people were like, do you have any questions? And like, I necessarily wouldn't have any questions because if I haven't experienced something, I don't know how to question things correctly because believe it or not, they're going to say, there's no such thing as a stupid question. <sighs> so, insert stupid question, insert disappointed face of teacher, bow this, kids laugh, all this class humor, but it's just like, no, there's such thing as a stupid question. If you understand the scope, uh, if you understand, understand the scope and the concepts of what you're doing, then like, you know, it's a stupid question. But if I generally do not know what the fuck I'm doing, I don't believe there is a stupid question, but it just all depends. Is it my fault that the teachers didn't want to teach me or is it my fault that I didn't want to learn? And I wouldn't say I didn't want to learn. It's just, I didn't want to learn the way that they were teaching. That was my fault. Just being a child, just I learned later on in time, I do have a love for education. I do have a love for knowledge. It's just when they're serving you things that you don't want to eat, you just don't eat. And maybe you will, but I am really weird about it. Maybe it's the autism. <laughs> just going to keep sprinkling that shit in there. Like there are certain things that I would eat for like three, four times a day. Weeks, months straight. For a while, I was in the kick of uh, Hot Pockets, uh, Philly Steak and Cheese. I would eat that shit for every single day, noon, night, morning, didn't fucking matter. Then I would uh, used to like Hot Pockets, uh, pepperoni pizza. I used to eat that every single day and then just stop. And it's just like, I didn't know what the flip it was. They didn't know what the heck it was. Finances control everything. If you ain't got the money, well, shit. Sex to be you now, doesn't it? And if you ain't got the right community that cares or wants to get to learn you, well, sucks to be you now, doesn't it? So that's more or less why I did my DIY psychology, because who else is going to be able to diagnose me? Who else is going to know me better than I am? And for the fact that I am aware, which is more or less recently, because... <laughs> screwed up part is I don't care what anybody says about this. And I always credit this to why I know so much about myself. It's TikTok. 
And it's because everybody's algorithm is literally personally set up to who you are individually. So if you're literally only seeing people twerk, you're a fucking hoe. And I'm not saying like, yeah, hell, it's just you, you thirsty. You want to see that shit. If you only see people doing dance battles, that's because that's what you want to see. If you want seeing people that are baking cakes, blah, this, blah, that, it's because it's what you want to see. My literal TikTok, I have freaking three of them and every single algorithm is done differently. One is literally spiritual. The other is mental health. And then the fourth, well, the third one, I don't really know. It's a bunch of mixed bullshit. A lot of comedy, I'd say, more or less. It just literally depending on which TikTok. I'd say my main one, the uh, Black Blonde 15, is the one that is geared more towards my mental health and who I am as a person. That's what helped me figure out my identity. And then my Blackie Chan one is definitely more the spiritual one. I get to see things on that aspect of the things that more or less people are trying to hide in plain sight or just trying to hide in general. And then the third one, it's just my full middle and last name. That's just, I'd say comedy. It's just fun shit that I just like to think about, like to share, like, we're all gonna die eventually. But I take it so serious. Just don't be an asshole. Don't force your thoughts and opinions. Just be you. But if you're an asshole, if you're a monster, if you have no accountability, if you don't care about anybody, be somebody else. Just don't be you. Because being you means that if you're a bad person, that means you have to be a bad person. But like, do you have to be a bad person? I don't think so. I do believe a lot of people can change, but I also have come to learn that change is an ability that not everybody has. Like, I could have always been that child that wanted people to think of me differently and always gave me the short end of the stick because that's essentially what I should get, quote unquote, for being a heart patient with a... Uh, lung issues because it's uh, pulmonary hypertension and uh, pulmonary hypertension and cardiovascular I don't think it's cardiovascular dystrophy I don't know so I know it's a hereditary so <laughs> You think I'd pass it on to my kids? Nah, nah. I'd pull out and wear a condom. I ain't stupid. Eh? Well, I don't try to be. Well, which version of me are you questioning when you ask these questions of me? I think I'm smarter than now, but I still think I'm stupid because there's a lot more that I can learn because, well, I know more than I used to, but I still don't feel like I know enough. High school... I almost failed my sophomore year. I focused more on girls than I did anything else. And I would say I focused on the gym, but my senior year is when I definitely let up. I was dead set, but I let my emotions get mixed up. I let my time get mixed up. I let a lot of things get tied into my relationship. And that's what I feel as if it was my downfall to what I physically wanted to achieve for the longest time. I wanted to be able to deadlift 500 pounds. And I would say the two points that I was closest or could have been is my senior year of high school when I was 18 and probably about when I was 22, 21 area when I was working asphalt and steel coating on top of doing um, manual labor, not manual labor, cleaning, but at least cleaning because there's two manual labor jobs. I was working a lot. I was hitting the gym on top of scrubbing uh, asphalt on top of, not scrub, well, actually, yeah, scrubbing asphalt, lifting asphalt, uh, lifting out drains, rings, working with uh, co-workers. Sometimes I'd take down the freaking blowers by myself, get yelled at and bitch up at my foreman because you're not supposed to do that. Then why the fuck did you tell me you used to? Nigga, don't tell me shit that I'm not supposed to do if you already used to because I'm not going to listen to you after you told me you used to. Hypocrite. <laughs> That's why when I give people advice, I'm like, I know it sounds hypocritical. That's because you're better than me. So go home and do your homework. What am I going to do? Go to sleep because fuck this shit. <laughs> I didn't plan to go to college. You did. Or your parents told you you planned to. I don't know. I still don't plan on going to college. But technically speaking, I did because the job that I did. But, like, that's not college. It just had a funny name to it. So I figured I didn't reach some of the goals that I wanted to. But in high school, I did figure out my uh, freshman year that I was a poet just didn't know it yeah good i show it i try to but i don't always see what other people see when they say i like you who's your doctor 
Like, no, I meant like your head doctor. Because there's got to be something fucked up with you. Because there ain't no way that you're quote unquote normal and you're like, me, what the fuck's wrong with you? Who paid you to? I don't believe you. A lot of people lie to me. I believe Truman Show sometimes. Maybe I'm crazy. Like, I do realize I'm a little bit paranoid. But when you've been lied to as much as I have, like, you got to show me more than just tell me. And that's just a lot of things that people say, oh, yeah, we're going to, like, a lot of things that the uh, lady used to do, she used to say, we're going to go to church. And I absolutely hated church. I also hated school. I hated a lot of things that had to do with the community, to be honest. <laughs> now I stop and think about it. And she would say, we're going to go to church, we're going to go to church. And a lot of the days that she said we were going to, we never did. And But the fucked up part is I would always be hyped up in emotions that I wouldn't be able to fucking go to sleep. So I was just hoping if we did go to church, at least I can go to sleep. <laughs> okay. In church, because if I'm going to do something I don't want to do, I'm at least going to do it tired because... <clears throat> goes by faster sometimes i used to fucking go to school go to school go sleep through school yeah a lot a lot a lot like that was that was my way of dealing with it if i couldn't get out of it then i'm gonna figure out how i can function with it because i can't do without because it was never my choice like it was but it never was like you have a right answer you still know you had the right answer and i feel like as i was growing up i started to develop a character that was able to fit into whatever people's right answer was because I have an option, but if I don't pick the answer that they want me to, then they're going to view me and think lesser of me, and I would never want to do that. I want to be loved by the community. I want everybody to like me, even though I don't like everybody, but I didn't realize that back then. I didn't realize everybody was good for me, bad for me, and those that I thought were good for me were bad for me, and those that I thought were bad for me were good for me. I got all these things confused because nobody taught me, but it just really all depends on what team I'm on love peace and understanding of others but you're just uh i don't even get the fucking political system when they say you're a liberal or you're a fucking republican you're a democrat i'm just like what like i i don't know i went i think i went through the same exact school system you did assumably like depending on where you went the community all do differently like it's not just like across the board this is what you learn this is what you do this is what you say i learned the school that i went to was actually ahead of the school that i was switched to just by a little bit actually no probably about a couple of years because i don't know if it's because we're a small town and the funny part is uh the town i moved to actually has a huge fucking corporation a fortune 500 corporation in it and basically made around it yet the school that i went to had a very small town i said basically the exact same kids played every single fucking sport either didn't or did and just switched out and we had smart boards i would say two to three years ahead of the freaking uh place that i moved to that has way more money pooled uh, poured into it and that's when i realized oh they're not pouring their money into education and some of the videos that I used to watch, like the Bill Nye the Science Guy, I saw it two years earlier in the school system that I was switched from. But at the same time, I didn't pay attention the first time, so I didn't pay attention the second time. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've seen this. <clears throat> oh, Bill Nye. <clears throat> if I have to go and do something I don't want to do, I'm not going to do a good job. Which is why I've learned... Well, I just learned if you do a good job at things that you don't want to do, they're going to want you to continue to do it. So I give people advice of just do good things that you want to do because it doesn't matter if you do or don't want to do it. It's just if you do a bad job, people aren't going to ask you to do it again. But if you do a good job, well, people are going to ask you to do it again. If people know you well enough, they'll be like, oh, you half-assed it. And it's just like, well, then why the fuck would you force me to do something that I don't want to do? And if you personally think you can do it better, then fucking do it yourself. But you probably won't. I just didn't learn how to delegate like everybody else did. I just figured, help where I can, ask for help. No, 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 I can handle it. But you're drowning. And you don't know how to swim. Well, Pride and Ego said I could handle it, so, uh... I gotta listen to them. Nobody else really talked to. Pride, Ego, Depression, Anger, and Love, Lust. They, 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 love and Lust basically twins to me. Pride and Ego said I could do anything if I set my mind to it. Uh... Anger said uh, I'll, it'll back me up and be the extra strength that I need when Pride and Ego says I can do it. Uh, smooth talking says we could probably walk out of it, but at the same time, anxiety is like we're probably not going to get their words out correctly. You're going to jumble it. So they're probably going to think I'm ADHD if something's strung on drugs. So hopefully it's the ADHD, if not autism. Maybe if I move my head around like this. I never really thought I'd be autistic just for the fact that 
I grew up with some examples, but it wasn't until I educated myself more to realize there's spectrums and everything. And the examples that I was given for autism were more or less, uh, they were definitely on the lower end of the spectrum when it came to IQ and education. And that was the dumbest thing that I ever thought. I'm like, I'm too smart to be autistic. smart because I am autistic because I learned to focus on the things that other people aren't because I'm trying to focus on the mannerisms of parents and how I'm supposed to be in this room because I don't fucking believe I should be in this room I don't want to get kicked out of this room I think I'm the wrong color for this room I think they think that I shouldn't be I should I want to I just want to be accepted by the group why don't they like me millions of reasons why maybe it's because of my hygiene maybe it's because of my pigmentation Maybe it's the way that I speak. Maybe it's the way that I didn't get the verbal cues. Maybe it's the way I didn't get the social cues. Maybe it's the way I didn't get the non-verbal or non-social cues. Maybe it's because when I thought they moved away, they just forgot to tell me to come to. So I came through and they just pushed me. Maybe they did that on accident. Maybe I just keep following or maybe I should just keep my distance even though they say, come over, come closer. Well, I remember when others did that to me, they just did that to hit me. Like they didn't want to do that distance, all that hard work when you can delegate to somebody else too. Like, hey, come here, come here. <laughs> Dummy. Why'd you come close? That's your fault. Why didn't you know? That's your fault. Didn't you see the signs even though they weren't? Or maybe they were. Maybe I just don't know how to read. I did learn a little bit later than other people did, but I did learn how to manipulate too. <laughs> I used to have a kid that read for me. <laughs> Reverse racism, bitch. This kid loved to read. So I took advantage of it by like, hey, will you read me this? Hey, will you read me this? And a lot of the teachers kind of let that happen. So he'd read it to me and I'd take the test and I'd get the score. I'd be like, yay. And he'd take the test too because like, I don't know, the way that the school system worked, I would say if I would have went throughout that whole entire school system, I may have been a little bit smarter than I am for the school system that I was in because they definitely made learning a little bit more fun-er, even though I know that's not a word, but neither, were, neither are some of the words that we fucking currently use. But they made learning a little bit more fun and engaging, but for the whole entire aspect of me trying to figure out, ah, what the fuck am I doing here? Ah! saying ah what the fuck is this what the fuck? for the fact that i was more worried about that i wasn't focused on the education i probably would have enjoyed it more or less in my high schooler years or maybe not at all because i felt like that was an environment that i just i don't know i felt like the change definitely did help a little bit just because like a whole new fresh start like these people don't know how annoying i am these people don't know how crazy i am these people don't know i fucking used to wear skater pants and running shoes and fucking soccer shirt like these people don't know how crazy i am so like they might like it or they might not. And maybe it's because it's a bigger place and there's like more school districts. Like if I don't like it here, maybe I can switch because we had school choice compared to like, this is the only bitch you got. You want to go to a different school, you got to go an hour away. We ain't going to know. There's no school of choice here, bitch. You got to be, if you here, you here. If you're not, well, your parents are going to be in jail because you got to be here. You got to be parented. You got to be schooled. Somebody got to educate you. So that's what we're here for. So like, I'm just glad Maybe it's just because I learned to numb things out, but I would say the school that I chose is the school that I just stuck with. And I stuck with the high school I chose because apparently most of the kids that went to that school went to the high school above it. And then like they kind of had a connection, but at the same time, some of the kids that I went to middle school with went to a different high school. And some of the kids went, that I went to middle school went to, like there was freaking four high schools, two middle schools, I don't know, three or four elementary. So there, there's places for kids. There's places for di diversity. There's places for this and that. And I would say it was a diverse area, definitely, definitely. Like it's diverse compared to where I came from, but compared to where other places it's not. It's not, and I'm aware of that now, but I wasn't always aware of it before because when you come from a small town where everybody's Caucasian, 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 chocolate. Caucasian, 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 Caucasian. It's like, wow. And now it's like Caucasian, Indian. I don't know what the fuck that is uh melanated oh shit it's not just me that's not a sibling of mine holy shit that's pretty awesome uh you're from brazil you said oh you're from spain what the fuck we got foreign exchange students in this bitch what oh you're from haiti too what really that's cool and i never talked to him past that like maybe like two or three conversations but apparently the whole entire pride and ego thing is a big haitian thing i'm saying like, i didn't know that i just thought it was just a me thing neglecting the fact that i am haitian but because well y'all got niggers too <laughs> So for me to pass this black is just as easy for me just to be myself until like government IDs me and then it's like, wait a second, wait a second. You're Haitian though. Like you speak English very well, but uh, your papers though.
It is what it is. And like, after a while, I would say, definitely after I graduated high school, I started trying to spend more time on work and get my immigration settled because my biggest worry was being deported. My biggest worry was not being able to finance a family. My biggest worry was not to be able to have a future. My biggest worry at that current moment was just not being here to be able to do what I currently do, which isn't even much more than what I was doing before. Or maybe that's just my point of view because one man's trash is another man's treasure, and I just don't treasure all the things I do, even though others are just like, oh, but Ethan, you do this, and you do this, and you do that. And I'm just like, but what about this? No, not the world's smallest violin. That's this. I meant this. This is me. And he, don't you know that sign? It's just, what about that? I don't monetize as much as people smile. Like, I feel like if I made even a dollar for every smile I've given to people, I'd still be rich. Fuck, you can drop it down to fucking 10 cents for every smile. Or even a fucking penny, I'd still be fucking financially suitable compared to the predicament that I've always been. And the fucked up part is I don't even always know what the hell I did to make somebody smile. Sometimes it's as simple as sitting next to them and saying hi. Sometimes the jokes that are jokes and sometimes the jokes that are truth, but I hide them with laugh because, well, <laughs> that's dark. <laughs> don't be like that. Well, it's my mind, though. Maybe it's the autism. I've been just trying to be the best version of me, even though people kept telling me, don't do that. Stop that. What is that? Why are you doing that? What makes you think you could do that? And then on the other end, sometimes the same voice, sometimes not. And I'm not saying voices in my head. It's sometimes just the same people which confuse the fuck out of me. Like, how the fuck are you going to demote me and promote me all the goddamn time? Well, deface me, devalue me, dismantle my identity, and then build me up, and then promote me, and say, hey, hey, look, 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 I found you. Hey, I'm on this team. I love him. I love him. I love this motherfucker. He's smart. He's educated. He's strong. He's goofy. He's quirky. He's uh, spontaneous. He's he's extreme. He's he's authentic. He definitely thinks outside the box. Like, he definitely doesn't know where his marbles are, but that's what makes him him. You know, I remember the conversation we had 15 minutes ago. You told me to shut the fuck up and not be myself. And now you're coming on stage just to smile and lie to all these mouth. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. mm -mm -mm. mm -mm. <clears throat> fuck you. Or fuck me because I let you do it. <laughs> but I'd say as time has progressed, my biggest fears have always changed because when I was very young, my biggest fear was being forgotten. And I'm pretty sure it stems from abandonment issues because from 1998 to 2002, November 14th, I don't know where the fuck I was. Like, I do have those memories, but the fucked up parts, I couldn't tell you how close they were in time span. I couldn't tell you what region I was in. Like, I literally had to do a lot of fucking hunting on my self-education to figure out even what city I was born in, I'm still not even quite sure if that was a city or if it's just the city that all the papers were issued in. So it's just like, huh. You can do a lot of things when you put your mind to it. I just didn't want to fucking be rich. Like, I know other people can. And the issue with being rich in the way that I feel would make me financially free enough to be able to enjoy life. I can't think of any legal way to do it. That's the fucked up part because it's just like other people did it. Then now I think about it, there's rules put into place so other people can't climb up that way. So they're gatekeeping information on top of gatekeeping the way to the top because what works for me and what works for them will probably work for the others. So let's not make sure they can do that. I feel, I feel and I figured in certain instances it's a huge boys club or a girls club, just depending on where you're at. And what I've come to learn is sometimes you can't wedge yourself into it. It's just like a, a tight-knit family that actually is family and doesn't just say that they're family. Like, like the work corporations do to continue to monetize heavily upon their employees uh, while they deteriorate the mental health and time that they have on this earth because, well, what's more valuable than time?
which is why they'll always undercut the true value of who people are. And yet this uh, least valuable people seem to make the most and most valuable people seem to kill themselves or go ghost because, well, I tried, I tried, I tried, and they just told me, shut the fuck up and laughed at me when I cried. So I died, I died, I died. Oh yeah, I got a poem. Never read that. <sighs> Call it my last poem. Aside from ones I make up as I do this. But I figured there's always gonna be something, there's always gonna be someone, but I'll tell you this now and I'll tell you this forever. The only person to blame was myself for thinking that I can change the world when I should only just be trying to change myself. And maybe I can change the world by the little things I do do, but because not everybody wants to see it on the world view, it's just like, ill. But I do realize the smallest thing from not yelling at a child that you don't know, the smallest thing from just smiling at a stranger, the smallest thing for just holding a door an extra second longer, the smallest thing from just giving somebody a dollar, the smallest thing of just being authentically warm to people can cause a chain reaction that the negativity chain reaction typically causes. Like, what I've come to learn and what I try to teach people in the times that they'll listen to my spiels, I'll call, sometimes I'll call them my little TED Talks, I'll call them my rants, I'll call them my spiels, I'll call them my this, I'll call them my that, but maybe it's just a source connection, but I'll say something along the lines of, if they can pass down the negativity effect of the, oh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, then why can't I pass down the positivity effect of, I like your shirt. I hope you pass that on to somebody else say, I like your shoes, or maybe I like the way that you act, or the way that you speak, or the way that you are, compared to just like, fuck you, and I only passed that on because somebody was rude to me earlier today, and I've come to learn on in certain occasions that I will become the pillar of the negativity and just be like, it dies here. I, I could be rude to the next person, what would they do to me? In certain instances, they don't even realize they may have done something to me. Did I choose to be offended, or they they... Uh, did I choose to be offended or did they truly go out of their way to offend me? Which is why I find it, found it hard as a child to figure out if people liked me or didn't because I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I fucking hate you. Well, hate me the right way so I can get that shit. Instead of hating me, they'll smile when I think, oh, they like me. I think. I think. Like, <laughs> they say, oh, you're a piece of shit. You're a work. You're the dumbest person I know. With such a fucking high inflection, I thought they loved me. I really did. I really did. I fucking did. You're telling me this whole entire time they're fucking making fun of me? Really? Really? Are you sure? Are you sure they're making fun of me? Because I really thought they cared about me. All right. All right. Back to the poem, though. Tales of a dead man. Five days until dead men. 5 27 2023. Let's try to do this right the first time. Five days. Until I know what real freedom looks like. Five days until I have nowhere to go. Five days until I am reminded on how it feels for the wind to be in my hair. Even though I'm really happy. <laughs> for the ground not to be under me. For whoever is unfortunate to find me. I hope you find my brains as appealing as others did my body. Five days until people start to pretend. You know who you guys are. Oh, I love them. I miss them. I, 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 I. How much were you in my DMs, though? Exactly. Five days until I become important for 15 minutes. Five days to end a 25-year streak of waking up against my will. Five days left. And I bet others will act like this is a lie. Treat it how the fuck you want to. Five days left. What do you want to say before tales of a dead man becomes dead man the tales are done when the artist dies the five days left and on the sixth some will assume somewhere i am alive e and she such a beautiful poem now isn't it like <sighs> coolest thing about me is I can pull poetry out my ass as easily as you can speak, as easily as you can breathe, as easily as you can walk, assuming that you're not a double amputee or a wheelchair-bound quadriplegic of some sorts. I'm just telling you, words were meant for me. Regardless if I remember how I'm supposed to structure these lines, it just works perfectly inside my mind. Words play, I don't really know. They just come out. 
sometimes perverdly, sometimes perfectly, sometimes perfectly. <laughs> it just either does or doesn't work for me. And some of the things I think, oh, that couldn't have worked. It was like, holy shit, that was perfectly fucked. Like, I don't know how I fucked it up to make it work, but what? Nah, it's just the shit that I come up with. I don't always know it. So don't ask me to recite it. I didn't write it. I just spoke it. I'm just trying to do what I can do. And what I can do is just be me to the best versions of me without being too much, whatever that means. Like, am I too much or am I in a place that can't afford me? Because in the right places, what is too much? In the wrong places, <clears throat> like I've always thought, why the fuck am I here? I wasn't even born here. I was flown across, paid by the taxpayers and shit. Like I said government money, so like we ain't really rich, but we could have probably made it through this shit a lot easier and a lot smoother if it wasn't lady tyrant that always wanted whatever the fuck she wanted. Too bad to be you. Too sad to be you. So you'd think I'd learn some financial tricks, some financial tips. Not really. The way I spend my money, you'd assume I'm rich. Now I just don't. I just don't have good impulse control. Maybe it's autism though. I just don't always have good spending habits. Maybe it's autism though. I just don't give a shit because I realize if I can afford it now. I should probably get it because later is not going to come for me. Because every time I held the money, I was helping other people because well, I remember what it was like not to have. I remember what I was taught. I was taught it, but I didn't always see it in practice. I did see it outwardly from other people because of the way that the people around me learned to manipulate people's hearts. Like, you wouldn't let these kids freeze now, would you? You wouldn't let this disabled child feel like this now, would you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't emotionally using the things that they could use. I could have easily been a product of, I have this and that. I didn't talk about my family because I don't know what family really means. So that's always one of the most uncomfortable questions that I always get, always get asked. Like, how's the family doing? I don't know, they're fucking alive. I don't know. Don't you got them on Facebook? Don't can't you talk to them? Why the fuck do I gotta be the medium? Like, why? I'm a family representative, but when people see me, unless they know me personally, I'm just a fucking youth, troubled. I don't know. Melanade, yeah, probably. Goofy, yeah, depending. Quiet, yeah, probably. Asshole, uh, depends how you see things. I just walk around with headphones on and avoid eye contact because I don't know autism, maybe. But. In certain occasions, I did learn that, but don't do it too much. Like, I had to learn to fit in because, well, this ain't my country. These aren't my people. I want to be loved by the community. So I think I do. Or maybe I did. I don't fucking know. I just tried my best. That's all you can really do, right? And I... I think I told all the important things once of Spark Notes. I didn't really get into the siblings because they have their own stories. But I'll do a little bit of Spark Note. The eldest is in prison. The one that gave up still, I guess, lives with us for whatever is left of us for however long that is because we're getting kicked out of our apartment due to the fact that the tyrant of the house was horny and end up wanting to get dick and got bed bugs from dick and have to deal with that shit and because we were never financially well off well we can only afford one problem at a time and you picked the fucking most expensive one now didn't you so it didn't really matter how much money i was making i still probably couldn't cover the bill and neither could he so it's just like and the worst part is she did it while I was making the least amount of money. Because the, when I was working for my fucking green card, I was making $16 an hour. And because it was 16 underneath the table, technically speaking, it was 18 I was easily making $1,000, not $2,000 a month. If she would have gotten that shit then, I would have been able to not only afford the fucking hotel for us to stay in for a little bit. I would have been able to afford the fucking orchid person, whoever the fuck needed to get the shit cleaned out. I would have probably been able to afford to say, fuck you, and left, because why the fuck would you jeopardize the goddamn family? It's fine if you want to be a little bit of a whore and get your rocks off, but don't fucking jeopardize the group. And that's one thing I learned about teamwork. Sometimes your team works with you, and sometimes your team works against you. I don't really think I ever had a team that worked with me. I just had a team that I worked with. 
And some people get that, some people don't. And some people want to say they're part of my team, but I question if people would have helped me if I didn't pay them. Like, I'll admit some people did turn on the money back in certain instances. Some people just can't ever turn it down. Like, <laughs> I offer out of courtesy because I'd never ask anybody to do anything for me for free, even though I have done things multiple times. But at the same time, when I'm put into the position when people try to pass me, I'm just like, no. Unless I truly do need it, but who's to say that you didn't when I offered it? So how am I going to be the dick? Do you always need it? Maybe you do. I still thank you. I still say thank you. I still pay you. But some people would always say rude things behind my back. And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know what good or bad is. And plus, you can't beat the fuck out of me anyway. So that's all you'll ever say is bad shit. Some people tell you to stop because that's all they can ever do. Some people get in the way and actually stop you. I've always thought words were important, but the actions are what really mattered. Well, always thought, not anymore, because words are important, but without actions that align with the words that you apparently said, or try to say, or try to be incredulous about, nah, I didn't really. <laughs> you know, just a little bit of something, something. I know, I didn't mean like that. What the fuck are you talking about? You uh, see? Because we all define things differently. Some, some for me and some, some for you ain't the same, though. I'm just going to try to soak up my last moments being as free as I can be before I'm truly free. And I hope I don't wake up. No, that's it. I just hope I don't wake up. Like, my last plan, aside from making these videos, is to put DNR on me somewhere. So, hopefully, whoever is on site... Or maybe I was thinking, like, I just keep thinking of these jokes. Like, what if I, like, somehow wake up a little bit and I maybe will call, like, 911? I'd be like, <laughs> could you send your most racist cop to finish me off? <laughs> Treat me like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> t t tell him I like white women. <laughs> Just so they can grasp how fucking psychotic I am. Even my last moment, I'd still be cutting jokes because life's always been a joke to me. I just wasn't always able to laugh so publicly about it. What are you laughing about? We're all going to die eventually, rather, if I'm alone or not. I was born alone. People will say I'm not alone. TikTok showed me I'm not alone, but kind of am. Far and few in between on the minds like mine. Like, what's the difference between insanity and genius? It's a fine line. Some people think I'm a genius and some people think I'm insane. I'd say you're both right. Because some of the things that did come from my brain would probably be something that comes from a crazy person's brain. Even sometimes I'm like, I don't even know how the fuck I thought of this. I was like, mm, gotta make it work, and I did. There's some things I wouldn't do because I don't need it that bad. And what stops me from being as successful as everybody else is, there are certain things I'm not willing to do. There's certain things you couldn't pay me to do. There's certain things you could never talk me into doing. There's certain things I wouldn't do, but other people are just like, I didn't know I needed to do that. If you would have told me that sooner, I would have been doing that. And I'm just like, I know certain steps to be able to get into certain places, but the only place I'm trying to get into has been trying to keep away from me for a long time. Death, I'm coming from you. Make room for me. I don't care if it's in the back seat or in the back of the elevator. I'll do Rosa Park. Actually, I wouldn't give a shit. Just make room for me. I've always thought, for as fucked up as the car is, I've always said out loud sometimes myself, if this car destroys and breaks down as I'm driving, only kill me, only kill me, because I'd hate to be like somebody that takes out other people. Like, drunk drivers or just fucking irresponsible people. For as much as I've tried to always help the community, for as much as I've tried to help other people, for as much as I've always tried to get in the way and help others, I would hate to die taking out somebody else. I was a criminal. But we don't define that shit the same. So a criminal to me is a hero to somebody else, and that's the shit that always fucks with my brain. So rather what you think about me... Oh, did I give down the full 
Now, okay, oldest one's in prison. Second one quit life because he wanted to. Uh, I'm assuming he went back to Texas to live with his sister. I actually don't know what the hell happened to Drew. Juan gave up. Daniel's in prison or jail. I don't remember what the fuck. Pretty sure it's prison because he's been more than a couple of years. Uh, uh, Drew, I think, is back, like I said, in Texas. Lubby's somewhere in adult foster care from last time I knew, and that's because I randomly saw her at the local fair that I went to one time. I don't even know why I went. I think somebody told me to stop, and I was like, fuck it, why not? Uh, Skyler passed away due to some sort of complications. They said natural causes. That's because the situation that we're in couldn't afford to get an examination, whatever it is, what it is. She had many heart uh, health complications on top of being uh, cerebral palsy. She was quadriplegic, and her mom did cope before she was born. Uh, uh, Skyler, who's past Skyler? Not Dejo. I already said Libby. I don't really know. Brian passed away. Me. Uh, Deja, I have no idea where she is. Last time I knew she was in Vassar at some adult protective service thing, I'm assuming yet again. Thing happened junior year when we all got taken out of the home. CPS, I guess, finally caught us for medical neglect because of Rashard because he wouldn't take his medication because the only way that he would is physically holding them down and forcing it down the throat. And the only reason he stopped taking his medication is because I stopped taking my medication. And we have two different problems. I have heart issues that could eventually kill me, but my mental health is probably going to kill me before anything else. But they're not going to say it's my mental health. Well, they're actually going to say I'm a pussy. They're going to call me a weakling. But it's more or less because of the crippling... Uh, capitalistic society that we live in but they're gonna say it's something to do with my mental health and yeah you're probably right because well you gotta be crazy why didn't you just fucking work harder why didn't you just fucking go homeless why didn't you just sell shit why didn't you just why didn't you just i don't know try harder because i've always been trying you guys just don't fucking respect the work every single new room i enter is having to show fucking who the fuck i am sometimes people know the stories sometimes you're like who the fuck are you oh yeah the new will be the restart 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 i got that shit Ah. Uh, past me was Deja, like I said, out in Vassar, I'm pretty sure. David out in Ohio, if not Idaho, or somewhere living his best life from what I can see. David's not even his name anymore, which is why I'm using it so freely because he actually reverted back to his original name, which doesn't matter because either you'll connect the dots or you won't. And that's your job, not mine. Um, Richard, from my understanding, last I heard, was probably like three, four, five years ago. He was somewhere in Detroit at a boys group home. But to be honest, for as aggressive as he was, like, I don't really know what it was about him. Probably because Richard, Dougie and I kind of have similar stories when it comes to uh, how we were left very young. But Richard doesn't have heart issues. He definitely has mental issues on top of uh, sickle cell anemia. And his meds literally are the reason why he's left, kind of like mine are, but like mine are just like, well, we assume it's going to work. So keep coming back for tests so we can try to figure out. Sometimes nothing's changed. Sometimes a little bit has changed, but I haven't been to the hospital in so long. I'm pretty sure a lot has changed, but financially, it doesn't really matter to me anyways. <laughs> My health has never been important to me. Um... Like I said, he stopped taking his meds and that eventually shut down his system to be bad enough that he spent, if I remember correctly, about two months in Mott's hospital, which is what caused the CPS case to open because he spent so much time in there. And like, how do you explain it? There was either you force him to take his meds by physically harming him, by holding him back because he would get very violent or you just give him the option not to. And they were pretty good at giving up. Like, very good. Like I said, I could have been anything I fucking wanted to, and I decided to be whatever the fuck I did. And some people, it's nothing. To some people, it's a savior. Some people, it's an idiot. Some people, it's an entertainer. Some people, it's this. Some people, it's that. And I'm just like, I could have done more, but I did as much as I can and as much as I could for the things I have, for the cards I was given. Like, I don't know shit about poker or nothing like that, but I know, like, sometimes you got to fold, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes you ain't got the cards to play. You just say, well, you got the cards, you got to play them. Some people die the second they're fucking born. You tell me I can't opt out? I just got lucky to have these many years. I got lucky to be able to sleep with these females. I got lucky to be able to have these experiences. I got lucky, and you're fucking right about it. Now, I'm done being lucky. 
So I'm a fold. Well, I'm still ahead. Actually, not really, but I'm a fold. <laughs> well, I still can before people are imprisoning me for doing things I didn't do, but because I can't have the freedom to kill myself, it's just like, really? Fuck you. 21st seven match. What the fuck you mean? You're telling me, like, you give me my fucking name. You give me my fucking body. You give me my identity. And now you can't, like, I can't leave. Like, if you stop and think about that, your body's given to you, your name's given to you, your identity's given to you, your religion's given to you, like, everything's given to you, so what is truly yours in life? You assume your life is, but it all depends on your community, it all depends on your parents, it all depends on your teacher, it all depends on your upbringing, but we all want to say, not everybody, that's too much of a blanket term, um, a lot of people want to say, well, we've all had it hard. <laughs> Define it. Define hard. Because your hardest thing might be somebody's dream day. Well, somebody's fucking dream day might be another person's nightmare. It's just restart, 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 restart. And to have a mind this big and nobody to talk and share it with you, question why I talk to myself. Well, who else could I talk to? Past Richard would be Ebony. Hopefully she gets into a good system in adult protective services because... Last time that we were taken out of home in fucking junior year of high school, which would have been 2015 for me, she was put in a home with a child that was named Robbie Novak, na like nicknamed Robbie. And from what I was told, just I connect the dots like there was no actual confirmation. I don't think there'll ever be confirmation on that. And of that her being raped under or molested by him, but from the previous stories, I wouldn't put it past it. And for the energy that I got from him, the way that I acted towards him, I'm just like, my only regret was I wasn't more aggressive. My only regret, because I'm pretty sure he did something very screwed up to her. And I I just hate that I wasn't more aggressive towards him. I just hate that I didn't beat him to a bully pope. I am just hate that I didn't do worse to him because I now know what I do know, but I wasn't as bad as I could have been. But I do hope that one day somebody serves him justice because I don't believe people like him should be walking around being able to do the things that they did. Like, she's not the first one. He's had one other before and he's had one other after. I'm pretty sure he's going to have many more past that because when you don't check monsters, they do whatever the hell they want to. That's my only regret. When I was in that house, I didn't beat him up harder. But she came back home talking about penis. I saw it. It's like, well, 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 well. If she came back saying, fuck shit, cunt, slap, blah, blah, this, I'd be fine. Because, like, I have a foul mouth, and I used to get yelled at a lot. Oh, if they go to school, start swearing, I'm going to beat your ass. You just said ass. You swear, where the fuck you think I got this swearing from? <laughs> partly you and partly TV. So it's like I learned to cut back to swearing, at least around my Down syndrome siblings, because it's basically like the copycat gene. And I still figured that she was saying things that she wouldn't know because like i wouldn't say the tv shows were monitored but still even though we watched law and order special victims unit and all this and all that like there's still certain things that they never said around the house that would have just been like what the fuck what did you just say and like after that was let known to me i just like i felt a little bit better for being an asshole to him and, like, I even knew that there was something wrong with him mentally. Everybody told us this. He was getting psychological evaluations and all this and all that. And I'm just like, and nobody's supervising him 24-7? Not whatsoever. There's a reason why there was locks put in places and all this and all that. But when you got a fucking monster that is driven to do whatever the fuck they want to, you think that's going to work? Nah. Nah, it's just going to slow him down. But, like, you need 24-7 supervision, might as well ball and chain him, but because he's a child, they're not going to treat him like he's a true threat until he becomes one. Now, it's just like, how many people does he have to rape? How many people does he have to molest? How many people? How many lives? How many? And, like, I, I literally could tell the difference between before his foster care and after foster care, and that fucking bothers me because I'm like, I don't know if many people have seen this in people, but... If you've known somebody before an incident and after an incident, I would feel you would notice that there is a glow that is quite missing. And there's a certain way that they act currently that they didn't do before. And if you're aware of it, you're just like, you haven't fully escaped that, have you? You haven't fully moved on, have you? If you're not aware of that, then it's just like, why the fuck are you acting like that? Come on, act normal, act normal, act normal. But what's normal for those that have been hurt in ways that others haven't? They adjust to what they feel to be normal. They adjust to what is normal for them. Everybody defines normal differently, but 
what is it? I just say that one of these days, maybe we'll get back to what a good community is. And maybe some people never know what a bad community is. But I believe one of these days things will get better. I just won't be around to see it. <laughs> and that's my promise. I did what I did. I am leaving the kids, but I did leave some gems. If anybody finds my videos, I hope you enjoyed them as much, I guess. I enjoyed making it. I, I think of my videos more or less of journals to my death because I, I'm not that good about writing and journaling. Like, yeah, I do love poetry, but most of my poems are written. Oh, not written. I'm a type. I would say I learned that I was a poet in 2012. But I would say I stopped writing consistent poems after I graduated high school. Like I did do a lot of writing because you work with what you have. But as time has progressed, I just learned to like to type more on my phone for texting. And I, I literally used to have fucking three or four fuck conversations. I used to even had two conversations with the same person on two different apps. <laughs> and you don't think that's autism or maybe something else? <laughs> that shit was the funny part. Talk to somebody on Facebook, ask that chat, two different conversations. Or on Instagram, ask that chat, two different conversations. Or over text, it's just like, I'll... and then <laughs> the funny part is sometimes we'd end the conversation on one, but keep it on the other. It's just like, <laughs> the FBI agents must have been like, what the fuck are they doing? Are these kids on drugs? Nah, the drugs came later. I shit you not when I tell you, the whole entire high school process, elementary school process, and middle school process is all sober. The only medication I ever took were medications that were uh, prescribed to me by the doctors, and even then I stopped taking them. Uh, junior year of, nah, probably sophomore year. Sophomore year of high school, I'd probably say. Like, once I got old enough to say no and then reinforce my no's, because you can say no at whatever age you want to, but... <laughs> you can reach your ass spanked at some point or another and then at some point or another you might get kicked out of the house but it's just like can you stand your ground when you say no at one point or another I was able to stand my ground so my no's meant no my yeses meant yes and if you didn't like my no's well tell me what the fuck you want to I don't have to listen like I will admit the way that I got treated and the way that the eldest got treated were two different ways because the lady really got fucking yarp yap yap like freaking chihuahua in Daniel's ear and I think she just took advantage of his cognitive disconnection but when it came to always going towards me people always said I was a golden boy in the home and all this and all that so either it was just that or it's just I was able to argue back and Daniel argued back too but he just more or less mumbled underneath his breath and she'd always say I could always stand on a fucking chair and knock you down with a baseball bat and it's just like Back then, I didn't realize it was abusive. I didn't realize it was toxic. I didn't realize the environment. Like, how are you going to know you have special needs kids and then basically be a tyrant around them and not try to cater to their emotions, try to cater to their needs? Like, some of my siblings, I feel as if they were guided better, they would have came out in better position. But due to the fact of poor guidance, it's just like, well, what'd you expect? What'd you expect when you can give them love, time, and attention? Like, yeah, we did move to a better place so we could do better things, but at the same time, what fucked with me is Daniel wasn't dumb enough that he couldn't work a dish dishwasher job or any type of cleaning job or just something where he was away from children, for one, because he's a fucking monster. I blame that more or less on low supervision, and apparently he was molested by one of our cousins, so that may have sparked it for him to go oh well if he did it to me then maybe I could do it to others because he doesn't have that cognitive connection that everybody else does like I said uh his issue was like apparently had a mental delay of like a teen or something like that so for him school was fun for him other things that I think I would find absolutely horrible or other people would find it horrible he'd find entertaining so I figured if he would have had therapy if he would have been guided into like some type of cleaning job or something where it was dishwasher work. He could have been making money. He could have been doing things. Like he was driven kind of to learn certain things, but the tyrant of the house seemed to want to, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck she wanted. Like she wanted what she wanted, but she didn't care about it. Why well. I always saw she wanted plants, but never had a green thumb. I shit you not. They all died. She wanted a lot of animals. A lot of them we got rid of in the ways that I used to think we got rid of. Like I used to think they used to take them to shelters. But from my understanding, the old man and uh, the eldest would take them out into some random rural world and just let them run loose. I'm just like, really? 
Really? Really? Just wow, just wow, just wow. So like, the more that I learned, the more things started to break up for me. I'm just like, I really did live a traumatizing life. I just didn't know it was traumatizing. I just didn't know. Like, when you have nothing to compare it to for the longest time, how do you know you have it bad? How do you know you have it good? Well, I looked over there, and I looked over there, and I'm just like, yeah, the grass is definitely green. It's either fake. It's either spray painted. It's either taken care of. But I don't know why the grass is greener, but the grass is definitely greener. But at the same time, the grass should only be greener because you want it to do or you don't want it to be. Like, it's a lot of the mental over the physical, but... How can you think about the fucking mental if you're too distraught and too discombobulated by the physical to even be able to be sound and logical in your mental? Like, I feel like I only became the way I did is because I had to learn the things I had to learn with or without guidance. A lot of it was just, I want it to be done by the time I get back. You showed me once. Well, yeah, it worked for them. So it should work for you. I'm not them. I'm me. Stop teaching, teaching and treat me like I'm them. I'm me. Like, Learn me. No, no. I have to be like everybody else. Like, some people did learn I was unique, but sadly, they weren't the ones that were in charge of me, or sadly, they weren't the ones that were guiding me. It's just like, oh. <laughs> some stuff. I'm later in time. It's just, yeah, I deal with what you gotta deal with. I figured, I played the cards as well as I could. It's good enough to fold, right? Um, I guess to sum up from high school till today is, so I've been doing this work and trying to help the family as it slowly deteriorates. Was it ever a family? At one point I did think it was. And at another point I was like, we're just a group home full of people that live together. Right if we care about each other, right if we help each other. I don't know if we're ever a family. I don't know what any of those things mean. I don't know because I didn't know better, but now that I know better, I'm just like, did they do the best that they could or did they do the best that they wanted? Depends on who you ask. Depends on how you see it. Like, I'll give them that they kept this house for as long as they did. But the thing is, one's in jail. A handful of them are dead. A lot of them didn't come back from the situation. So did they really do their best? Because I feel as if I would have spoken up in certain places still, instead of holding my breath, but... You're too young to think like that. You're too young to be aware. I've been in an adult conversation since fucking 12. I've been caretaking ever since I was fucking four. I'm fucking 25. I've been old before I was ever young. I don't know what the fuck it's like to be young. I just experienced a young life. Supposedly. I had the younger years. The younger years, quote unquote. I just looked young. I don't think I was ever young. That's the stupid part. But how do I explain that to people that think, wow, no. Couldn't be, couldn't be. You're bullshitting. Fact is stranger in fiction. When you grow up in a house full of 11 people mentally disabled, including, I'm pretty sure the lady was mentally disabled as well. The husband, low self-esteem, probably wasn't loved enough as a child just for the time being, the uh, span is that they grew up in. He grew up in, uh, well, he was born in 1954. She was born in 1958. So for their time span, as long as your kids are alive, you're doing a great job. I don't know. As I got smarter, I realized, but still can't leave. Still couldn't figure out what a good place to be. Other people will accept me, but that's because I've been acting. Of course you love me because I'm easy. I learned how to be easy. I didn't know I was being hard. Oh, I was just being me. Okay, I'll just keep up this act until I don't recognize who I see anymore. Fucked up part is I used to hate being called Seymour and that used to, that's just a manifestation. I've always seen more. I've always heard things. Like you guys will define it as crazy, but some of those things helped me and some of those things hurt me. It was actually the things that were physical that hurt me more than things that weren't. That's the crazy part about life. <laughs> Some of those delusions helped me get out of situations that I'm just like, wow, if I didn't move, I would have lost something. But I think I'm done for now. Or forever. I just know they say play with the cards that you have, but I don't know how poker goes. I don't know how gambling goes, but I'm pretty sure that at some point or another you should fold or just stop playing because gambling's bad. 
living's bad, lying's bad, breathing's bad, being's bad, anything's bad if you do it too much. Moderation is key, but where can you moderate yourself when they don't want you to be? Mm.